All right, what's going on? Today, I have a different kind of video where I'm going to be chatting with uh, Forrest from Retro or Die, which is a, a YouTube channel you can find. You also have VHS or Die, where uh, you make videos talking about shit that you're into. And the thing about that is a lot of the stuff you're talking about is stuff that I'm into. And, uh, you know, we're going to make a little little how do you do. So uh, how's it going, buddy? It's going good, man. I mean, it's been uh, what? How many years have we been talking on YouTube and we're finally doing this thing? It's been it's been a while, man. It's definitely been a while. Um, I would say a challenge to your subscribers and my subscribers that if you enjoyed this that you're about to see, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and make sure you leave a comment saying that you want us to do this shit fucking weekly. There you go. So we're just talking about Blair Witch Project right now. And we're talking about like all of the little uh, like documentaries and the website and all that. So can you just run down the website? Because I never got to see the website. Okay, so the website was so fucking cool back then. Um, I was in, I think, elementary school, fifth grade or fourth grade when the website was up. And of course, you know, before the movie came out, no one knew that this shit was fake. Everyone said it was real. The news said it was real. Um, People did like whole like e specials on TV about this thing being like these kids were fucking gone, and and the movie studios had paid the parents off to get the rights to the movie, so everyone was stoked to see it. And the website that was put up like literally had drawings, like excavation drawings of the fucking house on there and where they had found the tapes, and and like pictures of the manhunt of all the people that were going through the forest looking for these kids. They had whole biographies on these kids, uh, uh, where you might find them if somehow they just disappeared and went to another town, like places to look for them. Um, the main website, like as soon as you fire up the main site, it would just be the stick figure man. And it would say like enter site. And then that's when you would see like little clips of, of pictures of the movie and, and little shots of their parents acting all sad that they were gone. And, and, um, and then, of course, uh, after the movie releases, the website's still up. And then there's all of the merchandise that you could have bought, like hoodies and crap like that. It was really cool back then. I remember, like, me and my friends, we, we would literally go to the computer lab. Because, yeah, back then, that's what you would have. Yeah. Uh, you would have to go to the computer lab and we would go in there and we would research this and like I would write down little notes because I was so fucking like a nerd about the movie. Yeah. And be like, okay, they weren't seen here. Maybe, maybe they were there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. it's so fucking it's so funny <laughs> to think yeah. it now. So it says this guy's favorite restaurant was Wendy's. We just gotta find a place near a fucking Wendy's, man. That's yeah. where he's at. <laughs> yeah. Uh man, I think uh I think I just kind of recently uh, discovered the because I got the sticks and stones and the curse curse of the Blair Witch, uh, and th those those are just so fucking interesting to watch. Like like you said, all the biographies, like all the characters that came into the documentary, like their their film professor and uh, like these folklore historians and like all that. Like I think there's this one folk friends, yeah, like everybody, like these two guys, like on the middle of the highway. I think there's a bit with with just two random guys talking about it. They're, we're out looking for them, and like you said, man, when it shows those uh, film reels and like the tapes and all that, they're covered in dirt. It's so cannibal Holocaust. Like, right. uh, it, it, I just love it, man. So that I definitely, like I said, when I was a kid, I was not a fan. Now I'm definitely a diehard. I've actually never seen the sequel though. I've seen that one from a couple of years ago, but that's about it. Yeah, I. The see the one that the, the official sequel, which was the 2016 one, I fucking hated. I really, really, really hated it because um, they treated it like a fucking Jason movie almost, mixed with Evil Dead and shit inside of it. It was yeah. really weird. I really didn't understand where they were going with it. Um, but uh, the Book of Shadows, the second movie, was. At the time, I used to be really disappointed in it because. You know, I wanted to see a continued story of the first one and yeah. or, or another kind of found footage film. But this one was an actual movie like 
parodying. It felt like it was a parody of the first film. Yeah. Because it's like a guy, like the premise is, is a guy who is selling tours of what happens in the woods. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it, they find out that the Blair Witch may be real and she's out there fucking with them. But in like a movie sense, not found footage sense. So yeah, like and or something. That's where the problem came, I think. Like the original film looks like a found footage movie. This looks like a polished Hollywood movie. You know what I mean? Like this is like, thing is it's, it looks polished, but then when you go I, to watch, I don't mean like it's I don't I'm not saying like the quality of the film, but I'm saying it's not shot on like 16 millimeter mixed with like old like shitty video. Like that's the authenticity of the of the first Blair Witch. I just think it looks because it, it it's believable that it could be found footage. With this, it's like it just feels like there's too much shit happening. Like, and I, wasn't there a drone in that film? Like this movie was so forgettable for me. But I remember there being a drone at one point. Um, no, that was the 2016 movie where they okay. brought the, where they brought the drone. The Book of Sh- the Book of Shadows. Oh, fuck. Okay, we're still we're we're talking Book of Shadows. Okay. Yeah, Not Book of Shadows movie. was like, um, like a a film students movie. You would okay. have felt like you were watching a film students movie, but somehow it's yeah, it's the Blair Witch chasing these people down in a parody of the Blair Witch. Okay. The 2016 film was just. It made me so angry that I, like, I don't do, like, movie reviews normally on new movies unless it's, like, something I'm excited for. And that's when I get, like, really pissed off when it sucks. And (laughs) because I wasted money and also it feels like it insults me as a fan. Uh, Like, why would you call it Blair Witch? Why, Why did they call the 2016 Blair Witch? I don't understand why movie companies do that. Like, they're trying to erase the past movie. Why do they do that? I don't know, man. I think it's... I think it because it, it would sell better to a new audience as opposed to, like, Blair Witch 3. You know what I mean? If they called it Blair Witch 3, people, like, younger kids, like, the people that are actually, like, going to these types of movies, like, even though they're, you know, like, they don't give a shit about them. That, that goes to show you, like, the quality of the films reflect the audience because, like, the audience doesn't give a shit. Like, the younger audience doesn't doesn't care. Like, people like us that want to see an actual good horror film in theater, it's like a rare treat at this point. Like, when do you ever get to see an actual good, thought-provoking horror film? It's always, like, fucking those, uh, what the hell is it called? Like, Happy Death Day. Like, how did that get a sequel? Oh, I don't know. How the, how the <laughs> fuck do those know. movies get sequels, man? I, I mean, don't get it. I'll give credit to Happy Death Day because it felt like a fucking 90s movie. Somehow, like being made now i don't know how that's possible but it's like yeah it ripped off fucking groundhog's day i don't know how many people have said that but it's a fucking rip off of groundhog's day yeah with a killer thrown in but i mean yeah it felt like a 90s movie but yeah it was not it wasn't a good 90s movie it was like i still know what you did last summer you know it's like the third i know what you did last summer movie compared to the first one <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's a really good one on uh, Netflix called The Platform. You should check that shit out, man. Okay. It's 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 really crazy. It's like I would call it a sci-fi horror film set in a prison, and it's it's twisted. It's really it's it's a, a Spanish film, I think. And one thing I have to say real fast that pisses me off. You know when you go on Netflix and it's like it shows all these movies and it says like Netflix original and all this like like right. they were, came up with these fucking movies. They're just buying the distributing rights to these awesome foreign films a lot of times and then pass them off as their own. And that, that irks me, man. I don't know why I just think that's bullshit. But, uh, right now I think I've seen about five or six, like actually awesome movies on Netflix. Uh, other than that, it's just a bunch of bullshit. Like I I'm down here and I'll like find a movie, watch it that way because I find when I do go on something like that, it takes me three hours to find something i'm sorting through the same 25 movies the horror section sucks you know it's bullshit man that's what i feel about hulu's horror section it really is not great um because i use them a lot but it's just like yeah their their horror movie section is not great and i just recently signed up for for shutter just because i've been in this quarantine for a month and two days three days now um but uh i mean the, the, the funny thing is, I 
while my VHS movies, yes, they're not they're not fucking HD and they don't have all the fucking, you know, abilities to skip scenes or fucking previews and shit. The reason why I love watching them so much now, especially if I haven't seen them in a while, is because of the fucking commercials and shit that are still in these movies. Mm. Shit you would never see again. It just makes it so nostalgic. Yeah. And, and a lot of these times, like I've noticed a lot of the times these VHS movies, especially first runs of them, have extra footage that weren't put in DVD format. Um, and I, sorry if you hear that fucking train by my house. You might hear one from me too. I got a train yard right there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first Alien movie, and I own the Alien movie in like a shitload of different VHS versions, but the very, very first release of it, I was watching it. And all of a sudden, I stopped because I, you know, I, sometimes I just have movies on in the background while I'm editing video or doing whatever. Yeah. And I fucking stopped what I was doing. I was like, "What the, what the fuck is this scene? I've never seen this before, and I've seen the movie a million fucking times. Yeah. And it's just, it's just extra B-roll of them floating in space. But I know for a fact it's a scene that's not in any fucking Blu-ray or DVD or any other release that I've seen before, and it." fucking took me back I was like holy shit and that's when i realized like wow there's extra shit in these vhs movies that aren't in dvd and that's when it hit me so i was like wow yeah i think sometimes you might accidentally get a, a tv edit because sometimes the tv edits were different than the theatrical and and de- different than the dvd stuff like uh the good the bad and the ugly i know there's there's definitely two versions of that film because i I'm, i've watched that movie a fucking zillion times and I remember seeing this one version that had all this like little bit of extra footage. And I was like, this is, bu- this is what the, f- like, wh- where did this come from? Like I was in the same situation, man. And uh, I've seen, I've been in situations where shit's been cutting out, like, like taken away, like the yeah. uh, Dawn of the Dead, the, the version that I grew up, this fucking version right here, this is the director's cut. And there's like three or four different cuts of this movie. Uh, but I remember my dad had a, a copy of this, the double tape one. He lent it out to a buddy. The buddy lost it or whatever, never got it back. And uh, we were stuck with this shitty, like, taped version. And uh, it had everything cut out that we loved. And mm-hmm. we were pissed, so we didn't watch it for years until we got an actual one of these again. Like, one of those double dip, double tapers. Uh, fuck, man. I think, uh, what was I going to ask you about? Um, Could you believe, this is just a side, side note yeah. of drama. Cuts. Can you believe that there's people that still have no idea that there's a director's cut to fucking aliens? Oh my god. Like I, you you, you would the only not way to watch it. Many, there you wouldn't believe how many people that I've run into been like, what like when I talk about the part where Rick, where Ripley's talking about her daughter being lost in space for fifty seven years, people are like, What the fuck are you talking about? That wasn't that- in the movie. <laughs> Is that the scene where she's in front of like that hologram forest? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I remember, I remember one of the first times I seen the special edition. Isn't that about the first extra scene that's included? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I remember being like, whoa, what the hell? And then I'm seeing the gun turret scenes and all like that other extra shit. And I'm like, oh my God, man, this is incredible. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do want to touch on, on these two movies real fast. Uh, more, more so the second one, because I do got some shit I want to say about this. So Predator 2, okay? That's the same exact VHS one that I own, too. Okay, so we're on the same page then. Uh, how fucking awesome is this movie, and why does it get such shit? Okay, well, I'm going to sound jaded, because I love Predator, I love Aliens, and... I love fucking Dark Horse comics, okay? Okay. I grew up. The thing is, it wasn't cool to be a fucking kid who read comic books in elementary school when I was a kid. It wasn't cool to like fucking aliens when I was a kid. But I couldn't fucking help it. I was a kid that brought a fuck... On a field trip to school, I brought a backpack full of Alien and Predator Dark Horse comic books. And my friend that was sitting next to me was like, what the fuck? fuck because it was the first time he'd ever seen comic books with gore in it right and he was like holy shit and so yeah it wasn't it wasn't cool back then and predator 2 was definitely based around predator concrete jungle 
on the Dark Horse comic books, which was the Predator Dark Horse comic of Concrete Jungle was supposed to be the canonical sequel to the first Predator okay. movie. Um, I like the comic book better because it's supposed to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger's twin brother fighting Predators in L.A. <laughs> and finding out what happened to his brother in the forest, but uh, that's that's neither here here nor there. But Danny Glover, I think, did it a good job. Bill Paxton, of course, you gotta love Bill Paxton. Somehow he ends up in every sequel of a fucking alien movie ever. Um, Watch, but the movie itself, as far as a predator and taking ideas from the comic book, it, it's pretty spot on. I could see why it seemed a little stupid to some people because people it's like anything based around science fiction or horror or anything where it's in a comic book form first and then it reaches the big screen and always gets shit upon because it's a general audience who doesn't know anything about the series. People who saw the fucking movie didn't even know that there was a fucking alien comic book or alien versus predator comic book before the movie even came out. So when they saw the fucking alien head in the, in the fucking predator ship, they thought it was the first time something like that had ever been done. Yeah. Which was not right. But I mean, I like the movie. It's a fun, it's a fun action, like sci-fi movie. I don't know. It's a fucking eighties movie. It's an yeah, 80s movie that like speaks eighties all the fucking way to me. Oh yes. Like, oh yes. The amount of gore that's in this movie is on par with like like RoboCop, man. Like they like people are getting disemboweled like left and right, you know. It's it's insane and like I love the whole the the voodoo aspect and when he has the showdown with that fucking Rasta man drug in the dealer? fucking alley. Yeah. Drug dealer, the vicious drug dealer found in an alley. Yeah. With his head severed from the spinal column. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Fucking awesome. I love yeah. it. And the fucking Sega Genesis game. The fucking Sega Genesis game. In a, out of all times when games were like edited to a point where it's like, don't show gore, don't do this. The fucking Predator 2 Sega Genesis game literally has the picture of the Predator holding someone's fucking severed, severed spinal cord and skull in his hand. Fuck. They were just, they were feeding kids different shit back then. Like, you know what I mean? On the video games and stuff. I, like Kids were more respected then. I, I say that over and over again. I think kids in my time and your time were probably more respected in thinking that their brains weren't the size of a fucking peanut. They yeah. could handle death. They could handle action. They could handle fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger blowing someone away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I just don't get media now compared to how it how it was. We've become such a soft, soft culture that doesn't want our our upcoming future to understand. I mean, death, destruction. We don't want them to. We just don't want those things to exist for them. And and yeah. in movies that you see now, it's like, oh, every, it, the fucking endings are always good. The fucking yeah. endings are all. Good, and everyone always survives, and there's always a fucking great resolution to everything. And it's, it's fucking stupid. It's yeah, it, it is because I I totally agree with what you said about kids were respected more back then because we were allowed to watch all these like horror films, play these really fucking violent video games and stuff. And ninety nine percent of people from my, like that I don't know anybody that went off the rails because of a video game or because of a movie. Not one person, man. So I think it's total bullshit that, you know, how they were always blaming video games, blaming movies and stuff. It's just a cop out, like, you know, to avoid talking about like a bigger picture. You know what I mean? Which uh, is like the whole like mental illness, all that shit. We don't think we're not going to get into that. But I mean, I, I feel like when we were kids, we were watching stuff like cartoons were way more violent and way more uh, witty and smarter. They weren't so dumbed down. Like you said, like they really dumbed down shit and make it really like feedable like everything's going to be okay at the end of the day whereas you know it's not like that i mean look at the if you want a basic bare bone cartoon where it's witty and ultra violent look at fucking looney tunes exactly looney tunes exactly. from when i was a kid and looney and, and if you ask modern kids now they're like what the fuck is a looney tune uh, I, I, I've said this before because trust me, uh, what I do for a living, I'm around kids all the time. Right. 
they don't know what fucking Looney Tunes are, but Looney Tunes was a fucking really violent fucking cartoon, and it was hysterical. It was yeah. written well, and it was one of those points of media where I've said where it mixes kids' media and adult media and blends them to a point where everyone can enjoy it, and shit's going to fly over little kids' heads. Yeah. And it's always going to be that way. Even Disney was like that at, at a certain point. If you look at how fucking Goofy was, Goofy was a fucking giant asshole. If you look at his older cartoons, there's right. there's parts of him where he's a fucking, like, uh, addicted smoker, and he, and he fucking, like, hates his wife <laughs> and beats yeah. his kid. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing about those cartoons, a lot of them were made to be played before and in between actual theatrical films like at the theaters and stuff so like you know play in front of uh you know whatever crime film or whatever romance film whatever it is play a couple of those movies it's they they figure it's adults anyway and then they just kind of com compiled all of them like all those cartoons came out in the 30s 40s 50s and we're seeing like the edits from the 80s and stuff you know what i mean the, the bugs bunny and tweety show like all that shit yeah. like it's it's crazy man so uh, and even even the cartoons that were coming out, like Ren and Stimpy was like, uh, like I, I watched the shit out of that. It was a little bit before my time. But think of how adult that that cartoon is. Oh, I know how adult that cartoon yeah. was. Because <laughs> I, was, I was there when that shit was on live TV. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Okay, my dad loved that fucking show. He loved that show so fucking much that not only did we own like little T-shirts of it when I was a kid. Like I had a T-shirt of even Ren and Stimpy. But... I mean, I remember parts where it was like, it wasn't, a, like, Nickelodeon was fucking weird in the 90s, right? It was weird because uh, most of it wasn't cartoons. It was, like, live action shows with, with children and shit like that, or competition shows with children. But weird shit like MTV that had cartoons at the time, like Beavis and Butthead and Ren Stimpy, we would watch those, too. And even fucking The Simpsons was a lot more fucking vulgar. Like, I can't watch The Simpsons now. Anything past fucking, like, 1995. I can't fucking watch Simpsons. But, yeah, um, yeah kid, like, kids' TV was super vulgar. Like, Rocco's Modern Life, when you think of the fucking one guy whose nipples shooting to some guy's eyeball, that shit was already fucking already done in Ren and Stimpy. Dude, do you remember fucking Teletoon at Night? What like, show? Well, it was like uh, the channel Teletoon, like at nighttime, they would play uh, shows like Mission Hill and Undergrads and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Remember those shows? Mm -hmm. No, I think you probably dig those. They're super, super like witty and, and adult, but uh, they were readily available to kids on the kids channel. You know, just like what they think every kid went to bed at like nine o'clock. It's not how that. It's not how it they, works, man. Like they definitely did. That's why Adult Swim came on at like fucking eight o'clock at night, back yeah. back day on Toonami, <laughs> and you're getting like fucking anime, base almost like the that softcore anime porn, yeah, fucking movies on on Toonami back then. That's crazy, man. It's it's so, it, it blows me away that <laughs> they got away with showing all that stuff, like. Uh, compared to now, like, I don't think, like, kids now will never get the same kind of, like, sh like, they will never get to experience Chappelle show, you know? When Chappelle show came out, man, I was pro like, I was, I think it came out in about 2002 or 2004. In between there, I'm either 10 or 12, 12 years old when that came out. I, ne I never missed an episode. Mm -hmm. Never missed a fucking episode. And that was the most, like, racist, uh, <laughs> offensive show of all times and i sat there watch it with my dad and uh you know just it was great but we never took any of it seriously we never got offended by anything you know now everyone just has this this whole thing where they have to be like offended if you want to be offended watch the exploitation films they should be going <laughs> after them man <laughs> go after the companies that are still releasing those movies man because they're fucked i mean <laughs> I mean, I do have one of those exploitation films. I have one on VHS. It's like classroom horrors, and it it like it shows a guy smoking a cigarette on the back, and then like like the fourth clip down, he turns into a fucking skeleton. <laughs> but I mean, kids kids 
will never understand how media it used to be unless they have people like, you know, that were there showing it to them now. I mean, Dragon Ball Z is a perfect example. It's a show I grew up with. Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z are shows that I grew up with. And my my kid, who is now 10, when I showed her Dragon Ball Z for the first time and someone fucking died... And there was, like, blood shooting out of their mouth, and they're fucking, like, in agonizing pain. It, like, fucking blew her mind, because she's used to cartoons, like, I don't know whatever the fuck is on cartoon. What are cartoons now? I don't know. I don't even know. But they're nothing like they were back when we were kids, where you're you're, you're literally seeing death in front of you, and, and sacrifices characters would make for the better good of mankind. Like, that's shit doesn't enter kids minds now there is no fucking moral situation where kids are faced with anymore where they're gonna think it's now all about just it's it, it's almost like kids youtube now where it's just like yeah next thing next thing next thing next thing next thing next thing you know what i mean it's always kids, the exact but, same story in those kids shows nowadays where it's like the fucking someone like steals the other kid's cell phone or like they got to do a paper or something. It's never like they don't have any violent shows anymore. Like remember like Beelborgs and that kind of shit where like, like the central focus on the, on the show was fighting, you know, yeah. like there's nothing like that anymore that I know. Uh, of. Beetleborgs fucking the, the first, I mean, I know, I know the first season of power Rangers is really fucking long, but it's like a hundred episodes or some shit. Jesus. But I remember as a kid being fucking like destroyed inside when I saw that the Power Rangers had finally fucking lost and all of their Zords were like dying. Like you had to watch it on TV, all their Zords dying as they lost all their powers. And you're just like, oh my fucking God. Mm-hmm. It was just, it's just shit kids aren't faced with now with with tv or anything like that now yeah and that's why uh, we have shithead kids running around now like we do yeah like do you remember that show uh boy meets world yeah i mean i remember it i never watched it no what about uh you think it was like back in my day it was like i remember when that show came out but back in my day it was still like 90210 and some stupid shit like that okay or or saved by the bell <laughs> oh yeah I never watched that shit. Like, when I was a kid, I was, uh, I pretty much watched what my dad watched. Probably, probably the pretty much the same as you. Like, you think, like, the shit that he watches is cool and all that. So I was watching, like, old shows and stuff. Like, I, I love me some, like, Gilligan's Island and MASH and all that kind of shit. Hogan's Heroes and Sanford and Son. Like, that kind of stuff I, I love. And if I try to, I've never tried myself, but if you tried to show a kid now, those kind of shows, they probably couldn't handle it. You know, a show like MASH, uh, today's kids would not be able to cope with it, especially that episode where, uh, you know, th- it's about uh, a chicken being killed, but by the end of the episode, you realize it was really a baby and it's real <laughs> fucking sad and emotional. Like kids nowadays, they couldn't deal with that. They'd be like, oh my God, they need fucking, they need help. Man. The, I also think it's because a lot of the parents, despite, you know, me and you are the same. I think your dad and my dad would probably be like best friends, it sounds like, with, with the shit that they watch. Yeah. I think a lot of kids also of that time that were, well, kids, people that were in high school at that time when that shit was coming out, mm. they grew up to be the soft-ass parents that are raising soft-ass kids now. You know mm. what I mean? So it's like kids, kids are barely given an ev- education about life and death or or any of that shit now we almost like i remember in high school having having fucking history books that had almost eradicated certain parts of history and i remember getting in trouble by one teacher be like this is not how it fucking happened this is not this is not accurate and she got pissed at me and and sent me out of the room because she didn't like the fact that I was pointing out that this shit wasn't fucking real that we were we were being taught in school. So it's it's crazy how how that worked, eh? <laughs> Fuck. 
you know, <laughs> teach us teach us the the most lighthearted part of everything and skip out all the fucking horrific monstrosities and shit it's true i mean one of our biggest days i mean i don't know how it is in, in canada i like to call your guys's country canadia but okay i don't a little, I don't have, a little shady J uh, reference there. Yeah, Can it very, there, very much that. Um, I don't know that you guys. Do you guys have Thanksgiving there? Yeah, but it's in October. Okay, so we kids now are literally not taught anything about the actual historical events of that mm-hmm. happened of fucking Thanksgiving and the Pilgrims and the fucking Indians. And yeah, any yeah. of that shit. And I know that from a fact, just being a parent myself, that kids are not being tr- being actually taught real history. I had to actually teach my own kid about the real historical events around Thanksgiving and the Pilgrims and the Indians. That shit's not taught to kids now. And that's no. a scary, scary, scary thought to know that we're, te- we're literally not teaching them anything that's real. And... I definitely am a firm believer of the if you don't learn from history, we're all doomed to repeat it. Yeah. Kind of kind of scenario. And I feel like it might not happen in your lifetime, my lifetime, but it will happen in like maybe the next hundred years where we're repeating shit like that because people aren't taught what fucking history actually was. Exactly. It's so wishy it's so fucking uh you know mickey mouse if you want to call it that like like i said when they they brush over all the all the the dirty secrets you know and that's crazy because i i i kind of want to mention this real fast because i don't think we were recording when i when i gave you kudos earlier for the the manhunt 2 video you just put out those games back in the days i remember i remember it was such like a big deal uh at school like uh like everybody no one was warned. Everybody was waiting. You know what I mean? We all wanted these games. There was never like this, this like ban on it. And then immediately Grand Theft Auto comes out and it's like, it's, it's a whole different world. I find like everybody's blaming video games. I remember like, thankfully, like my parents didn't give a shit. They were like, here's, here's Vice City, go have fun. And I'm like, all right, thank you. But, uh, like, right. I, I just, I remember all seeing on the news, like I remember San Andreas came out and me and my cousin got it like immediately And uh, right away, they were trying to, like, ban it because of, like, that uh, hot coffee mod or some shit like that. There was, like, some kind of, yeah, some kind of sex mod. mod. Yeah. And I remember being, like, like, what the fuck? It's not even a mod. It was an actual hidden mode that that was supposed to be in the actual game. But the developer was, like, going to be dead whether they, they, they fucking let their shit get censored. And they fucking hid it really well in the code of the game. And it wasn't found, yeah, until a little bit later after the game's release. And that actually, that copy, that copy of the game, if you have it, that has the actual fucking coded, the coded part in there that has that sex game in there is actually more rare than the than the re-released version that has that code taken out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Um, what was I going to say? The The whole... The whole like protests and all that, that didn't impact like my community at all because everybody I knew had those games. Like there was no, uh, but that once again, like, like you said with the the whole respect thing, I think we were kind of given a certain amount of trust that we weren't going to, you know, it, it was kind of like our parents would be like, don't go fucking blow up the neighborhood when they sent us out to go play with our friends. So they expected that with the video game, I think like it's a fucking video game. How harm, how harmful could it be? And then if you do look at it, it is pretty violent shit. You know what I mean? Like. I could see somebody going off the rails, but they'd have to already be off the rails. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you have to already be fucked up. I mean, yeah. I, I I had Grand Theft Auto 3 before fucking Manhunt ever came out, and Grand Theft Auto 3 fucking blew my mind. Oh, yeah. I loved it because, I mean, I, I grew up watching fucking Godfather and fucking gangster movies as a kid. Yeah. And, I mean, we're, we're Italian. My dad takes that shit very seriously, and he, he loves the fucking Godfather. Like, when we made spaghetti as a kid, he'd have the fucking Godfather's trilogy playing the entire fucking day. Yeah. So it was like when, when Grand Theft Auto 3 came out, and it was, like, super heavily revolving around fucking mafia shit, it was, like, it was fucking awesome. And, yeah, I knew for a fact that 
if I were to try to go up to a cop and punch him, he's going to fucking shoot me in the face. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't so, know how hard it is to understand that. Yeah, exactly. If anything, you got any kind of anger, take it out in the video game. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to do it in real life. And it's interesting that you've mentioned the whole mob, the whole mob thing, because all those Grand Theft Auto uh, games, especially that first one, it's chock full of mafia film regulars. You know what I mean? Like Frank Vincent is in there. Uh, I forget his name, but the the captain from Bad Boys, he's the guy that owns Luigi. His name's Luigi. Luigi. Uh, yeah, Luigi's <laughs> Girls. Like all those missions, like they were so fun. Like like GTA Three is such a goddamn classic game. And like eight ball, like back in the day, this is oh, no eight shit. Ball's I, badass, I oh, love it. Man. He's the badass. When I was a kid, uh, a family friend had lent my cousin a PS2 with GTA 3 and some fucking shitty racing game, and we were like, "This racing <laughs> game sucks, dick, man. We're not playing this." So we pop in GTA 3, but we don't have a memory card. So oh. like for, for for a week, man, we had to hear that fucking eight ball say, uh, "My hands are all messed up, so you gotta drive, brother." <laughs> <laughs> So we still say that shit to this day. Like, I'll see him and I'll say that. Uh, or I'll be like, uh, nobody touches my girls or some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's a new drug on the street called Spank. Or some spank. Shit. You yeah. spank my bitch. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, that was such a fucking fun one, man. And all, like, the, the, the characters were just unreal. I remember after I beat GTA 3, just, like, driving around. And, like, having these scenarios in my head, you know what I mean? Like, pretending I'm doing shit. Like, that was the fun part about that game because there was never anything like that before that. Like, you felt like you you literally were in a, a mafia film and yeah. a damn good one at that. Yeah, because the first two Grand Theft Auto games were, like, these top-down, you know, yeah, isometric games. But this one was, like, yeah, it was, like, the first open-world open world sandbox game that i could remember ever playing i mean aside from if you want to talk like fantasy games like zelda and secret of mana but i'm talking about like something of that era and something that felt like it was real life at that time yeah and the part where you, the part where you can just go i remember one mission specifically where you can go fucking plant a bomb in this guy's car who was in a restaurant yes you see, yeah it. And yeah. park and wait for his fucking ass to come down there. And he just, it, it was just, it was called like Leo Lips Last Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great fucking mission. And I loved all of those missions. I loved all of them. And Grand Theft Auto 3 was so good in that way, where it was like the missions at that point were all original. Yeah. And Vice City, you know, if Vice City was, was more of a soundtrack awesomeness than it was originality but still it was pretty good yeah um i mean actually it was really good san andreas was the was the one that i remember being the longest that it ever took me to beat a fucking video game before because it was just so long but it was good well plus you get sidetracked with all the the, the new shit that you could do you know what i mean like get your guy fucking haircuts and work out and like all that kind of shit and like the gang wars like uh, like honestly man to me san andreas is my favorite grand theft auto just because it was that's the one that hit me hit me the hardest like i could actually beat it like i didn't beat gta 3 until you know after i beat san andreas years down the road kind of thing so it, it was man it blew me fucking away and th that kind of leads me into talking about manhunt real fast like manhunt to me that was more of a myth than an actual game when I was a kid. Like, my cousin and me, uh, we had seen it in the magazines, like, Tips and Tricks and all those fucking magazines. And uh, I remember us going, like, like the, the cover just reminded us of uh, Friday the 13th. Right. Because it had, like, the mask, right? Uh, and we just could never never get a hold of it. And uh, he got a modded Xbox years down the road. And he's like, I got fucking Manhunt. He's like, do you want to borrow it? I'm like, yeah, man. So I, it, 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 I could not fucking do it. I just could not, like... So like I said, I got, I got lucky in that way. My dad bought that shit when it first came out. He mm. was anticipating it, and I played it on, you know, on release. And it was, it literally was a fucking mind blowing game because it was like, yeah, it was like, okay, these are like Grand Theft Auto 
three characters at that point because this i think this is the game that came out right before or right i mean right after grant the thought of three and right before san andreas so they're right in the middle and the shit that you can pull off in that game i still think is some of the best shit that you can pull off in video games as far as that genre of game and something that will never be repeated is the sad thing it's something that will never be repeated because people will literally not stand for a game where it's going to i mean imagine grand theft auto 5 graphics with manhunt oh people will lose their fucking minds yeah i mean the game literally was an iconic statement at that time for the industry and still, I played it as a fucking middle schooler and never massacred anyone. <laughs> so that's the thing, man. Because we could we could fucking separate reality from from fiction or entertainment, you know. I mean, think about it. This is the thing that this is the thing that makes me laugh, especially at the people that make the arguments about, oh, kids are gonna play this game. Kids are gonna fucking commit murders. And kids are going to do this. Guess what? You, how many how many times have you ever been walking down the street where there's a fucking gang running around waiting to kill someone on the actual streets of your city? Yeah, exactly. They've taken over a whole fucking block of your city. And they're, <laughs> they've, they've set up a whole fucking little playpen on your street to commit murder. Yeah. <laughs> no one. No one's ever fucking done that. No, it, it's it's annoying. And it gives, like... Uh, like you know, violent, violent video games, violent movies, and shit. Bad, a bad reputation, you know. I mean, it gives it a bad reputation because at the time, fucking Columbine, Columbine was the biggest thing that had ever fucking happened before. And I mean, I remember when that shit happened. I mean, I lived in Colorado when that shit fucking happened, and we that was the first time cops were in our school. It was the first time fucking metal detectors were put in fucking schools, and I can I, I can still say today that no one ever fucking massacred a school. It, it's it's fucked up people like we both agreed that are already fucked. Yeah. And <laughs> even if they're not fucked, well, they are fucked. But even if they're not like fucked, where it seems like their childhood or whatever the fuck happened was fucked. Yeah. Some people on this earth that are born fucked up. They were yeah. born to be fucking evil. I believe that. I mean, there are some atrocities that you would read about in fucking the world that you're like, what the, what the, this, this guy fucking chopped up a dude and fucking ate his dick and, and kept him alive for three days. Like you read yeah. these stories about Russia, like people in Russia that are really fucked up. Oh yeah. Right out, of, out of the gate. I, and, I don't know. And even, even if you look at fucking, uh, right in like, uh, like North America, like guys like Albert Fish and Jeffrey Dahmer and all those kind of guys, like Jeffrey Dahmer, like you can see video footage of like his his dad, like his dad's just like a, a normal dude. Like it's not like he got fucking beat well, or anything. Well, his dad dude. fucking normal. Okay, Jeffrey okay, Dahmer's I, I, fucking dad is weird. Okay, okay, I wouldn't say normal, but he doesn't look like he's got any kind of like you know uh, Jeffrey Dahmer behavior in his in him. Do you know what I'm saying? I bet Jeffrey Dahmer's dad fucking blamed half of his own murders on his son. <laughs> <laughs> Was he a murderer? No, Jeffrey Dahmer's dad was never convicted of anything, but he was a fucking weirdo. I've seen all of his fucking interviews, and he's a fucking weirdo too. I'm I'm a little rusty on Jeffrey Dahmer. I should have uh, I should have like I'm more of a fan. Well, if you can be a fan of a fucking serial killer, you can't is, be. I I I when I was in I remember in middle school and high school, I rented all those fucking movies on every single one of all of them. I even had books from the fucking library that I okay. I rented. Here, okay, here's here's the ultimate question for you. Were you like the only person that you knew that was into a lot of the shit that you're into? I yeah. like okay, like okay, because so That's we're in the same like boat. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It, it is like that for me today too, man. Like, uh, I feel like when I was a kid and stuff, and I was into like the serial killer kind of stuff, like all and horror and that kind of shit. Like, uh, you felt like psychotic, um, not psychotic, but I just felt like I was doing something wrong. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just, I'm just reading about it. I always said to myself, I would never do it. I'm just reading it. You know what I mean? I just want to read about, it. I was so interested in Charles Manson 
and like the hell's angels and all that kind of stuff like crime of like the 60s fascinates the shit out of me i think it was still like wild westy like in you know what i mean like you could get away with a lot of more shit you know what's a weird thing when you say about that is that anything before i think you know the the two thousands was fucking wild westy, unless you were were rich and you could afford video cameras at, at, on your fucking place. I mean, when there's no proof, like there is at every corner of every place today. Yeah, it was fucking wild westy because you could fucking get away with anything if you were fucking smart back then. I mean, I'm I'm such a fucking nerd that I grew up like in the third and fourth grade where at Costco, it's like a giant warehouse grocery thing. I don't know if they have it in Canada. Oh, yeah, we got Costco. Okay. Where where I got 1930s and 19, to the 1950s horror tapes, like cassette tapes on old programs that they would do of, of radio shows before TV was around. And the fucking shit that they would promote or at least say in those in the, in those stories is shit that you would fucking get away with back then you would get away with fucking murdering your wife or murdering someone mm -hmm. in a fucking park and there would be literally almost no repercussion unless you literally left your fucking name there yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's it's fucking weird how to think that like nowadays i mean even if you're a law-abiding citizen if, if, if some shit were to happen, it's all on video. You're never actually truly not being seen. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah, and even with the cell phones, like everybody knows if you're talking about, say, Corona fucking beer, it'll pop it up on the Google search. Yeah. Bar. Like, it's it's crazy. So, you yeah, we're, we're in constant surveillance. So, that's it's quite the it's fucking, like fucking quite minority the report. Yeah, or I was I was gonna say uh, like we're in like a fucking Nazi Germany kind of style fucking thing. Like they know what we're doing all the time. Or no, uh, Tony. I Tony, think uh, it's the Will Smith movie, Enemy of the State. Yeah. <laughs> like or Tony Montana. Do you want a chivato on every corner watching you? Telling <laughs> what to say, what to think. <laughs> like, uh, fuck, man. I love me some Scarface, man. Hey, man. I was gonna ask you. Have you ever seen the movie Society? Is that a horror flick? It's a horror flick from the 80s. And it's a movie that, you know, I've been meaning to watch for a long time. And I just recently watched it like a couple of weeks ago. Did you and, do a video on this? No, I haven't done a video on it. I, okay. I was thinking about doing it, but I just never did. I don't, here's the thing with me, I don't like doing movie reviews on old 80s horror movies unless I own the fucking VHS of it that I can hold it in the fucking review. And I don't own fucking uh, Society because it's fucking expensive. Oh. It's like 60 or 70 bucks. I'm like, I'm not paying for that. That's crazy, man. And the fucked up thing is, you never know, you might, you could find it in a thrift store. And that's the thing that sucks dick with collecting tapes and stuff because i've bought tapes like for instance uh i bought the gate 2 for like ten dollars at shock stock one year and then immediately after i found it twice at thrift stores for a buck and i was so pissed and like if that so, had happened with a super expensive tape like you said like with society i'd be so fucking mad yeah i i've done the same thing with fucking turtles tapes there oh. there were there were ninja turtles tapes i was like I'm never going to fuck. Uh, this is literally me after collecting like for a few years of VHS tapes. This is a, a, a hilarious story. And it's also, it made me want to punch myself in the fucking face after it happened. <laughs> um, there, there, there's one fucking Ninja Turtle tape that I couldn't find fucking anywhere. And it was the stupid, stupid fucking Easter one. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't find it fucking anywhere. And it's been years at this point. So, yeah, I fucking bought one for, like, $9 on eBay. And and then, literally, probably the next week, I'm at my thrift store. And there's two! Oh, my God, dude. I wanted to put myself in the fucking face. Oh, that sucks, man. 
So that's the thing. That's the gamble with this shit, man. But I, I fucking miss thrifting, man. It's been like a month of not being able to go to a thrift store. Dude. I agree. I can't go to the fucking flea market. And it's literally right down the street from my house, like walking distance. Oh, man, that sucks. That sucks. We are flea market. There's only one section of it open, and it's just like the food section, uh, which is pretty gnarly because they got some good shit in there. But uh, it sucks. Nothing's open. But uh, th- there is like a lot of shit that I've been watching. And like, I just I have so much goddamn movies that I haven't seen. So I'm like going through them, watching these like movies that are considered classics for the first time with a mindset that is not like, you know, when I was a 12 year old kid watching this shit. So I'm getting my head blown off like every day. Like I just watched It's Alive for the first time. Have you ever seen that? Awesome. Yes. I have have the second one on VHS. Okay. Like, man, I was I love like such like 70s shit seems so fucking good. Like it's so it's either super gritty and sleazy or it's like really fucking awesome. Like or not awesome, like really uh, or it's really fucking terrible. I've seen some really oh, really okay. fucking bad 70s movies. Okay, yeah, but okay, there is a lot of shit from the 70s, but at the same time, there was more better shit coming out than there was bad shit as opposed to today. Like think of the amount oh, of today? bad shit. Today? Yeah. Today. I can't I can't even what year are we in? 2020. I can't yeah. even fucking count on one hand. Yeah, what like the fuck I've seen yeah, like, it's it's crazy, man. Like, there's so much garbage coming out compared to back then. Like, what was another one? Uh, Even like, this last is... year. What the fuck did I see last year that I really liked? Fucking Sonic? Fucking <laughs> Strangle Me. <laughs> what came out last year? Uh, the Devil's... What the fuck was it called? Three from Hell came out. That was decent. Okay, I haven't seen that yet. I, oh, I, I Okay, I, I, I will say why I haven't seen it. I'm glad you say it's decent. I trust your opinion. The reason why I chose not to see it or not to watch it, I mean, it's free on Shutter. I could watch it at any point, but yeah. The reason why I chose not to see it is because I I saw that Captain Spaulding's probably in it for like less than five minutes of the movie, and there's like this new character that gets involved, and like for me, that's like really devastating for someone who grew up on fucking House of a Thousand Corpses and fucking yeah. shit like that. It's like Oh. Well, I'll say this, man. He's in the movie less than two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll say that, like, the thing about it is, like, you could you could see it in his face in the film. Like, he is, like, on the way out right there, man. Like, he looked brutal, which is horrible. Uh, but I, I did like it. And that new guy, he's, like, a decent addition. He's definitely a decent addition. It's more of a... It's definitely... It's not Devil's Rejects, and it's not House of a Thousand Corpses, like, at all. Like, in terms of, like... That's hard for me. That's hard for me because I want to see progression. <clears throat> House of a yeah. Thousand Corpses was fucking... Probably one of the most insane movies I can remember ever seeing when fucking modern horror... As far as modern horror came out at that point. Oh, yeah. And then, and then Devil's Rejects, like, blew me the fuck away because not only was it brutal, but it told a really fucking good story. And it felt like an old horror film. It felt yeah. like something you might have watched way back when, as opposed to the, the other shit that was coming out at the time back in, like, what was it, 05? So yeah, you were getting a like, lot of remakes was, and shit. I would like remakes. Remake. <laughs> the Omen, fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I will go on record to state, I do like a lot the remake Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Me too. And I like the the beginning as well, the which was, like, the the sequel to the remake which was uh, the origins of how Leatherface came to be and how the sheriff guy got his, you know, his costume and all that shit, which I, I love. Cause I love that character, the Arlie Army, I think his name is, right? Uh, the guy from fucking Full Metal Jacket. Yep. Like, it's... He, he just reminds me of, like, my grandfather, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, not, not with my, grandpa, my grandfather, too, and he was in the fucking Navy. Yeah, same here, man. Same fucking here, dude. <laughs> I have my grandpa's Navy shit. Like, he's, this is just totally off topic, but I got like some of his postcards he sent back. And there's like this one, it's like the coolest one. It says, uh, whatever ship it was. And it's like, this was the first warship I was ever on or ever stepped my foot on or something. It was like a big deal to him. So I'm like, I'll fucking cherish this forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Uh, what the fuck have you, what have you, what else have you been watching or playing? 
I mean, it's exactly what you said. It's it's where because of this fucking virus and the quarantine shit, I I've, I've been watching so much crap. And 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 you know what? It's it's kind of detrimental to me because um I mean, I was furloughed from my job because of this thing. I mean, I'm still getting, you know, stimulus shit from being furloughed, but it's detrimental to me to a point where because I'm watching so much shit that I had on the backlog that I don't fucking own on VHS that if I get drunk on eBay one night, it's going to be really bad. Yeah. Really. <laughs> because <clears throat> because there are so many fucking horror movies that I, I like a lot that I don't fucking own that I've been watching lately. Like fucking Cellar Dweller. This, never seen that. Okay, okay, Cellar Dweller is fucking amazing. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. It has fucking the guy that played uh, Herbert from fucking uh, Reanimator. Okay, uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs. And, and, and it's, based, it's basically a fucking uh, movie about a comic book character, uh, a comic book writer who creates a fucking demonic char- comic book character who kills people in a fucking art house. Like, like a fucking art college. <laughs> That's sick. And it's it's called, so what's it called? Cellar Dweller? Cellar Dweller. All right, and if down. you look on eBay, if you look on eBay, I have like 10 listings of it. And all of them were in my like watch list because they're all like, they're not super expensive. They're like 40 bucks, 30 bucks. But I want I want the fucking original artwork one. I don't want the fucking clamshell bullshit one that came out in Australia. I want the our fucking original one where it looks like a giant demon from fucking like Baron of Hell from Doom holding a woman's shirt like her tits are about to pop out. She looks all like ah! like I want <laughs> that shit. Like I want that fucking VHS release yeah. of the movie. Yeah. And it's it's just like so like that's why I've seen society. It's why I finally saw Night of the Demons. Night of the Demons. Oh, nice. Yeah. Night of the Demons is like, I can't believe I went my whole life without actually fucking watching this movie. I did too, man. Until the Scream Factory thing came out, I never heard of it. I never even heard of it, man. And it was fucking so, awesome. I I ended up buying a, a version of Night of the Demons in a in a VHS lot and not even knowing it was a preview version of the film. It's a preview version of the film that you can't get anywhere else unless you get the preview version. This version. Yeah, that's sick. That's like the screener copy. Like, yeah. this movie I thought was so fucking cool. This movie almost overtook like some of my old like favorite movies of fucking horror. Because <laughs> I, when I... When I was watching, I was like, this, this, this blows away like... I'm not going to, I don't want to sound blasphemous, but it almost blows away fucking Evil Dead. Okay. Oh my God. (laughs) Okay. I can see where you're coming from. Are you talking the original Evil Dead right now? Like the 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 first first one? Okay. Okay. I can see that. I can see that for sure because it's definitely like a fun, it's like a fun horror film with a supernatural element. I, 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 I could almost agree with that statement. It's just, I love the. I the cabin in the woods overtakes the like the castle kind of party atmosphere for me. True. That's just me though. Uh, but I, oh man, I really do agree with you. That movie is killer, man. And I love I love uh, Lene Quigley, like how she like has her transformation. And she's putting all the fucking makeup on. There's the yeah. scene where she's in the store and those guys are staring at her fucking ass and oh, the other oh my like God. stealing all the shit. I, when I was watching, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy i would have been just like those two chodes at the fucking store <laughs> exactly the place would have been empty bro uh fuck that it's it's so fun man like they don't make movies like that anymore and it sucks no, no they don't i mean if i were to think of a horror movie where it was like kind of resembling of that it was fucking trick or treat like trick or treat was fucking great that's a good one that's a really good uh what was that like 2009 that was 2006 Seven or nine? Uh, what the fuck? I have it somewhere. I don't know. It's from I think around that era, and 
that you know movie. How people didn't see that movie because it got banned. Because <laughs> there's really? child death. There's child death in it. That's why. Oh fuck! There's child death out the ass in that new Doctor Sleep movie. Have you seen that shit yet? I okay. Don't 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 ruin the movie for me. I okay. I won't say anything. I'm a, I'm an avid Stephen King ringer, reader. I have the mo- the the book. I've read it. I've read the whole thing, hardcover. Don't blow for me because I'm real. I'm so scared to watch the movie. I'm well, so I was scared too. to watch I was the movie. Yeah, the, I, the I was, was so fucking good. It was like it took me to a whole nother level as far as like reading a Stephen King book had become. I mean, I want I, I have uh, Mr. Mercedes and all that shit, but I'm like, I'm like, The Shining is very important to me, and, and I've been to the fucking hotel. I've been to oh, the no way. hotel. Okay, it? it's in Boulder, Colorado. Holy shit. And I've been to the fucking hotel. There's and the weird thing about the hotel is there's fucking uh bisons all over the fucking place around that fucking hotel. Really? Like yeah. Buffalo. But there's buffaloes all what? around. The place. It's, it's fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, it's That's weird. Random. But The Shining was really important to me in like middle school. I grew up all with it. It was so important to me that I fucking I I, I I've been to the fucking hotel. And then when I read Doctor Sleep, I was like, just taken back of how good it was. And I was like, fuck, Stephen King still fucking has it. Even though I kind of like, don't really respect his his thoughts on movies because his thoughts on movies are kind of shit. <laughs> I agree with that. So I, I, the only reason I think Stephen King hates Stanley Kubrick's Shining is because it was fucking better and scarier than his book. But the book is is fucking creepy as shit too, man. Because I read that shit too, and you know the scene where Danny's first explaining. It's near the beginning of the book. Danny's explaining uh, an experience with Tony, and like he said, he was sitting on the curb waiting for his dad, and he looked down the street, and he seen uh, Tony or whatever. That fucked me up. Okay, you were talking about The Shining and how much it meant to you. I just want you to finish your thoughts because you were. Or what were we talking about? I know we were talking about The Shining. I mean, we were talking about Doctor Sleep. I didn't want you to ruin. Okay, that's right. Um, Because, yeah, yeah. Doctor, uh, The Shining meant a lot to me as a kid. You know, I had it. I read the book. I watched the movie as a young kid. And um, when I found out there was a sequel, uh, of course, I was on the fucking pre-order list for this fucking sequel. I, I got the hard copy and I all read it was fucking like blown away it was like okay stephen king still still has it and um i'm a i'm just scared to watch the movie i'm scared to watch the movie because i don't want it to suck because yeah modern horror fucking sucks i i trust fucking uh ewan mcgregor or whatever the fuck his name is he's a great actor uh in everything i've ever seen him in he's great i mean fucking train spotting is a one and two are fucking amazing films, but I never watched the sequel yet. Oh, it's fucking great! You will you will shit your pants at how good it actually actually is. Um, I don't know why I said it actually twice. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> uh, because anyway, I'm just I'm just worried the movie's gonna not be as good as the book or not hold up as well as Kubrick's film because. I mean, yeah, Stephen King's book of The Shining was great. When you when you read it and you know it really well and you watch the first movie, you're like, holy shit, it's like a compendium. It's like a compendium in a way where you can you know what the fucking characters are thinking because of all the fucking internal monologue that goes along in the first book. And and, and certain scenes that are shot in the first movie, you know what the characters thinking because they're in the book. Um, the second film I'm worried because it's not Stanley Kubrick and Stephen King when he has direct control of his franchises when it comes to movies is, you know, it's kind of hit or miss. It's not the greatest. It's not the worst. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Are you talking about Maximum Overdrive right now? Uh, okay, I'm not. No, Maximum Overdrive I actually like. I'm talking about fucking like Langoliers territory. <laughs> Okay, yeah, the shit that I would that I have never even considered to watch. <laughs> oh, 
I'm talking about that territory. Like, like Tommy knockers and that kind of shit. I never I never even tried any of that stuff, man. Uh, no, not for any particular reason. I just thought it not because I thought it was like gay or whack or anything. I was just not into it, you know. I was like, no, nah, I'd rather watch it or The Shining or fucking Pet Cemetery or you know uh, what, what were some of the other ones back then from him? Firestarter, uh, Fire Carrie for Carrie. fuck's sake. I mean Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot, creepy as shit, uh, but Christine. toned down for television. Could have been more. Christine. Salem's Lot could have been better. Christine, yeah. Um, he's done a lot children of the corn for fuck's sakes which okay. i love so children of the corn is like a uh, you're not a fan love, love hate relationship for me with children of the corn <laughs> okay okay i love it man the thing is i like i've read uh what was it i think it was in the stand or night shift that's what it was in night shift uh and i really fucking like that uh and i think it's better than the goddamn movie we got and the the reason why I, I love that movie so much is because of that kid, uh, the red-haired kid, Courtney Gaines. He's in a movie called uh, Colors, where he plays, like, this gangbanger. And I was always obsessed with that character. And it wasn't until years later that I saw Children of the Corn. And I'm like, there's that guy. And he actually has, like, a, a big role in the movie. I was so excited. And I, I'm tell I just love that movie, man. I love the little oh, creepy God. fucking, creepy, like, pilgrim hat wearing son fucking, of a bitch. Fucking Malachi. <laughs> Yeah, Malachi. Question me not, Malachi. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's hilarious. I was trying to explain that shit to my kid the other day, actually. It was like, because I was like, I remember watching fucking Children of the Corn as a, at, at fucking 10. I, yeah. I could watch fucking Children of the Corn at 10. And and I'm trying to like explain it to her, like the intro. She's like, what's this movie about? And I'm like, well, basically it's a town where the kids take over the town by killing all the grown-ups and she's like uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious i mean i didn't i didn't explain the whole fucking like demon thing that was going on with it but she seemed kind of like bored with it um well you just you just gotta explain it to them like give them the the the, the lure like you know kids that I kill everybody and take over the town <laughs> it's the I best ex- terminator before children of the corn and what sold me immediately when I saw Children of the Corn, I was like, holy shit, it's Sarah Connor. <laughs> exactly, yeah. What the, what, the hell, what the hell's her name? Linda Hamilton, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she plays like a fucking real, you know, yeah, actually, you know what? I, character in that movie. All, all of my experience with her originated with Terminator 2, so I always thought she was a badass. So and to see her playing your- like that. That kind of, I'm like, who the fuck is this? Like, she's, what the hell? That's fucking That's like, yeah, he, he fucking burned and burned alive in the fucking Terminator reenactment of the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At the park with all the kids. Yeah. She never existed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bullshit. She's not a good mom. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's actually another movie that has uh, an extended cut. Oh, Terminator and, and Terminator 2, yeah. Yeah, I remember. I've never seen the extended cut of Terminator One, but I've seen it of uh, Terminator Two. You know what's weird? I can watch Terminator a bunch of times, and I I catch something new every time. I never saw like the most hilarious thing I remember ever seeing was in in the first Terminators when Kyle Reese first steals that fucking hobo's clothes. Yes. When he's running down the alley, you see a giant shit stain down his fucking pants. <laughs> Yeah, because he's fucking stealing it from old shit pants <laughs> Louie. Fuck, man. Like, I never noticed that before. I <laughs> watched so the bitch stole my pants. Yeah. And he's running, and there's a giant fucking shit stain down the thing. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> you never thought they, you know, well, they gotta make it realistic for you, right? <laughs> I love that fucking actor, too, uh, Michael Bean. Oh, yeah. Michael Bean's fucking great. I- I'm glad that he fucking, like, when Alien 3 came out, he put up as much of a shit show as he did to fucking make sure his character wasn't even fucking used in the movie for yeah. what they fucking did to his character in the movie. Yeah, that was bullshit. Now, yeah. I don't even bother with Alien 3 or uh, Resurrection. I don't even have them on the wall. Okay. Resurrection. It's going to sound like it's going to sound so weird because I'm so I'm so into aliens and I fucking hate Alien 3, but Resurrection is really not that bad. 
it's okay. not that bad to me. And it's not that bad to me because I think that it had so much that it could have. I mean, it had such a thing where it was like building upon Waylon to Waylon Yutani expanding their technology, their lore, being able to fucking clone people and shit. Right. Um, and, and it tied into comic books. And I think that's, I think that's probably wise because I was such a fucking comic book nerd where, where they were actually implementing things that were like in the current dark horse comic books for aliens, where they were literally using aliens as like a fucking military weapon at that point. They were even like fucking stamping tattoos on the fucking alien on the xenomorphs heads. I like fucking okay. numbers. And That's shit. awesome. Um, and, of course, I fucking love Winona Ryder. I mean, she's like a fucking goddess to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, that was at her peak of being hot. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's why I love the movie. It's just Yeah, that's movie. probably why you like it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> that's jokes, man. That's uh, jokes. Uh, She's so fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> that Elvira standee behind you, where the fuck did you score that? Okay, so as a kid growing up in, in, in the 80s and 90s, Elvira was a, a huge figure. I would see her on TV all the time. Right. I mean, my, me and my dad would watch fucking Tales from the Crypt HBO series when I didn't know what fucking sex was. I'm seeing like chicks' tits out and weird shit like that as a kid yeah and i'm and then i'm watching commercials with Elvira, and i'm like i like her i like her a lot so she's always yeah. been like kind of a figure to me and then like probably six or seven years ago i'm like you know what i'm gonna look at what fucking elvira shit there is and then i see this fucking cores commercial because <laughs> every halloween I do this weird fucking thing. I do it during Christmas <clears throat> where I watch fucking old commercials on YouTube from when I was a kid of uh, fucking Halloween and, and Christmas. And I'm like, I just reminisce and, and fucking hate the fact that I'm, I'm old as fuck now. And, and <laughs> I saw this Coors commercial with this standee, this exact standee in the commercial. And I'm like, holy shit, I wonder if that's on fucking eBay. And I found it. It was 50 bucks. And I bought it. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Because I was always wondering, like, the history behind that. That's dope. I love her. I mean, I love... I, and, and the thing that, the, like, shocks me still today is if you follow Elvira, like, on Instagram or anything like that, I mean, the actress that plays her still posts shit today. She still does the whole Elvira thing. She shows up to fucking cons as Elvira. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I hoped... I hoped that I get lucky enough one day to where it's like she's at a convention that I'm actually I can actually go to and yeah. maybe have her fucking sign that giant fucking hole in the moon right there. That would be dope. Fucking amazing. It's just like America, like I, I envy you guys so much because we don't get these cool conventions that you guys fucking get there that I'm always hearing about. We don't get these here. We get like stupid ones like Sacramento anime. And fucking, like, there's a shitload of anime conventions. Like, cool, anime is cool. I understand. But it's not as fucking cool as fucking horror movies. Yeah, exactly. I, like, it blows me away that... Because <clears throat> me, like, in London here, we have shock stock once a year. And it's fucking... It's awesome. But you always hear about these other places where it's like, oh, if you thought that was crazy, like, this place was fucking, like, t ten times as big... And that's all that shit that you hear about is in the states, like Cinema Wasteland. You hear about you hear about like Texas Frightmare and like all these like things like that. But like the Zydel Land. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, nah, man, I'm telling you, if if you got like, if you got to drive, you got to fucking drive. I mean, if we didn't have if we didn't have shock stock, I would have to go to Toronto, which is only like two hours away. Yeah, I'd rather go to all of those places. I'd rather. I'd rather go to all those conventions that I've seen pictures of and heard about. And also, of course, to meet fucking Yasmina of fucking Witchfinger Horror Podcast. Yeah, they're they're chill as fuck, man. Like, the thing is, that podcast, they do it there, like, live every year. Like, they record a yes, podcast. I, I, like, I think yeah. last year they did. I really don't fucking remember, to be honest with you. But it's cool, man. It's 
It's a cool, like Shockstock is like, uh, people are walking around selling booze. Like it's like literally a party. It's, it's all, it's honestly one of the things I look forward, forward to the most in the year. And it was supposed to be in fucking May and now it's not until August. So it sucks. And there's going to be a lot of like, uh, Italian, uh, exploitation actresses coming over, which hopefully that doesn't get screwed up. But, uh, which finger will probably be there. Uh, man i'm telling you it's it's a good fucking time like it's at a hotel you can rent out a room and it they have the like last year it was called the all-nighter frighter where ev- like shit you know the guy from lost boys that plays the fucking saxophone yeah he was there like just randomly fucking jamming hard man it was crazy like my, my, one of my buddies that i went to film school with one of his fucking one of his girlfriend's friends is dating ted ramey ted ramey the fucking <laughs> I, just, I swear to god man i met this guy he wasn't even a guest and he was there at the thing and people were like holy fuck and i have a photo of you and shit he's insane guy it was fucking insane shout out to my buddy dave if he ever sees this fuck a shout out to you dave holy shit yeah it, it, man i'm telling you and actually uh dave my buddy dave he uh he's working with one of uh, our film professors doing like a, a video game kind of documentary series uh, which should be dope, but yeah, man. Do you collect any kind of like video game, uh, like paraphernalia, i.e., like magazines and shit like that? Oh yeah, I have, yeah. I have. Not only, <laughs> I have that, but not only fuck. I have not only fucking video game magazines, but I have fucking toy collector magazines and comic book collector magazines. Okay, okay. So oh, yeah. it's just like it's just too much stupid shit that I collect. That's just like no, no, no one man should ever collect as much shit. I think that I fucking collect or have as many hobbies as I fucking do. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the thing uh, that is crazy about this collecting bullshit. It kind of makes you like go all over the place, like everywhere from like movies, games, fucking CDs and shit, and like people are collecting vinyl, like like no one's fucking business these days like it's going it's booming man vinyl is back like i think in a big way and i don't think it's going to be that much longer before you're seeing uh people putting stuff out on vhs tape like because people are still doing that like there's a companies like uh i think video nomicon is one of them and there's there's a slew of them but i'm talking about like an actual like you know 10,000 tape release kind of thing i think it could i think it could happen man especially with 3d printing and stuff they can make the tape shit super fucking easy now it's not like they're cannibalizing tapes yeah i mean um, when i first got the gorgon um re-release of despa i uh before i bought that actual thing i i found the actual like original release and the guy had it in la and and he had it signed by like most of the cast of the fucking film and he wanted like 80 bucks for it <laughs> and i couldn't bring myself to spend that much money on a fucking vhs tape just because, just because it's like nes games from back in the day i couldn't i i i know how much i can get these shit this the shit for anywhere else i'm not gonna fucking spend that much money uh in retrospect maybe i should have because i mean the original release of Despa is like incredibly rare and hard to find now. I don't know. It's fucking bullshit. I mean, they're fucking VHS tapes. It's a fucking dead technology, just like NES games are. It's fucking crazy how much money people spend on 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 that shit. Yeah, it's it sucks, man. And the thing is, all that eBay shit it fucks over the. Uh... It, it's it screws over like guys like us that want to go to a thrift store and uh you know hunt the shit down that's what we want to do we can't do that when there's guys out there that are going around just to flip everything you know what i mean like you can see them i hate fucking going to a thrift store and seeing a guy like using his phone to like look shit up like looking at records and stuff looking up all like it's like dude like come on man you're making it a little too obvious that you're here trying to flip shit like come on if you think that's bad okay so i hate when i go to thrift stores and I'm looking for books, okay. specifically Stephen King books. And I see people there with their phones with a fucking scanner. And they're scanning the fucking code, like the, the, the 
code things on the QR codes on the back. Like the SKU code? The SKU code just to see what the fucking thing's going for on eBay to put it in their fucking cart. Oh my god. Like, those are the people I want to just drop kick right there in the fucking thrift store. Uh, fuck. And I see that all the time, especially when it comes to books and movies, like DVD release, releases of movies. You see that shit all the time. Yeah. People looking for the out-of-print shit. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, I didn't even know. Like, I get it. There's shit that's rare. There's there's stuff that people want to make a buck on stuff. But, I mean, to literally be going through aisles like that and just, like, kind of pirating the whole... Like, being a fucking pirate, basically, through the yeah. whole thing. I mean, it fucking sucks. I don't know. That's why I... I don't know. It, like, I get mad at them, but at the same time, it's like, oh, maybe I should have fucking gotten there earlier, or maybe I should <laughs> just... I it's gotta, first, it's first come, them. first serve at, th- at thrift stores, right? It, sure. the th- you know what? Okay, talk about the Wild West. Thrift stores are still the fucking Wild West, man. It's true, unless they don't fucking exist anymore. Like, most of the ones in my area got all fucking shut down. I hope that this fucking COVID shit doesn't mess with us, because we got, like, seven th- thrift stores here, man. And they're all fucking worth checking out from time to time for tapes and stuff. And books, too. Like, I buy a shitload of movie books, like, books that I, I haven't even fucking read or probably will never read, but uh, whenever I find horror-related shit. And I've, I've never seen anybody... Vintage board games, too. It's like, Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. Well, I don't even think of that. I don't know. It's fucking... It, it sucks, but I mean, like... I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know, like, this fucking Night of the Demons VHS was the fucking, like, promo copy. Like, I didn't even know that was a fucking, like, promo copy until afterward. But I already know if if the person that sold me this VHS knew that it was the promo copy and it was a harder to find copy than the one that's in the fucking clamshell or whatever... They would have. They would have charged me up the asshole for it. <laughs> they would have. They would have guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed, fucking teed, man. You're gonna. It's gonna get to the point where all the basic shit on VHS is gonna be expensive. Like, we will see the day where like Scream is like twenty dollars. That know? fucking blow my mind. The day that you know it will really blow my mind, and I have I have video phone footage of all these times of me going to thrift stores. When we find Men in Black fucking going for 20 bucks. Fuck. Men in Black fucking graveyards upon graveyards of Men in Black tapes. Then we're really fucked. Do you know what I find fucked? And let me ask you your opinion on it. Do you find it fucked that people are like opening uh, or renting out like pop-up shops to showcase like Jerry Maguire collections where nothing is. it's, It's only Jerry Maguire tapes. Have you seen have you seen any of this shit before? I've, I've never seen that, but that's <clears throat> really fucking weird. That's the thing, dude, because like I don't have you heard of like uh shit, I can't think of any of the names right now, but there's a bunch of these Instagram accounts I follow. They'll rent out a space and uh, have people pay like admission and come and you know, like basically museum tour it. And it's it's some guy's collection. But some fucking dude out there has all these Jerry Maguire tapes and he'll rent out this location and you can go there and get, take selfies in front of an entire wall instead of a bunch of, you know, like a library. It's all the same thing. Like, what the fuck is that, man? Where's the appeal to that? I mean, the only time I've ever seen something like that is when someone is collecting literally only and every gold cart of The Legend of Zelda for NES. That's the only time I've ever seen something like that. Hold on, I'm going to fucking show you this right now. That sounds... I mean, I don't know. I know it's not politically correct, correct for me to say, but it sounds retarded. <laughs> it is retarded, man. Like, look, at this is a wall in the store with nothing... It's going to be shitty because it's off my phone, but... Can you see that? Yeah, that looks fucking stupid. Like, how dumb is that? Like, what are you doing? It looks like are some shit from with, Willy Wonka. Are they obsessed with Tom Cruise? Are they going to, like, fucking... <laughs> Bruce, what, what's going on? I don't even like Jerry Maguire, man. Fuck that movie. I, I think that movie. 
Oh, I don't even know what I would say Tom Cruise's best role is. His best role is fucking Les Grossman from fucking Tropic Thunder, man. Where he plays oh. like that Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> that is really Fuck, that is a really good role. Yeah. yeah. G9. 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 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And money? A shitload of money. <laughs> or G19. Whatever the fuck it is, man. There's a movie, man, that you cannot make today, Tropic Thunder, and that's only like 10 years ago. Think of how insanely offensive, like people, like our, our prime minister here in Canada, Justin Trudeau, like a couple of like months ago. He's it, cool it, dude. It, I've seen press conferences on COVID-19. He's kind of neat. I like yeah. him. He puts a fucking new one out every day, every day. But fart. <laughs> there's he... photos, photos surfaced of him in blackface. And people and, lost their fucking I mean, minds. I mean, people lost I mean, their minds. I mean, shit. America had that shit with fucking hobos. I mean, we had kind of like blackface with fucking hobos in America. You know what I mean? Yeah. I see, I see what you're saying, but uh, I, I, I have to point this out. It's not fuck, to me. To me, it's going to sound fucked up. It can't. Okay. It can't be offensive. Unless you make it offensive. Like, to me, shit can't offend me. Like, someone could show up in a fucking Halloween costume as a fucking uh, World War II fucking veteran with a fucking dead Korean baby in their arm, and I still wouldn't be fucking offended. You'd be like, that's you know a good I mean? goddamn costume. I would not be offended. It's a fucking costume. I know what the shit fucking is. And that's the thing I also think is that, that shit's been lost. It's, like, totally gone out the window where we cannot like me and you saying retarded we can't i could not fucking get away with saying retarded in the outside world anymore i could say it every day every day anytime before you know maybe 2005 yeah yeah (laughs) i don't know it's just it's it's like what Chappelle. i think Chappelle said it actually it's like everything's funny or nothing's funny I think it was Patrice O'Neill that might have said well, that. Maybe, maybe it was Patrice O'Neill. Everything's funny or nothing's funny, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. I mean, me too, man. Everything should be allowed. I, I think Patrice O'Neill once said, uh, "The attempt should be allowed." You know, as long as the the attempt should be allowed, as long as it's for the sake of humor. If you're trying to offend, that's a different story. But no one's trying to. <laughs> I think you're you got to be an asshole if you just if your goal is to just offend. You know. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't even know how many fucking stupid members of the the KKK that exist in America, but if they do, I mean, they're fucking, I mean, they are the legitimate last resort of fucking retardedness that we have in America. I mean, and and that's only going to get away with, there's no way that they would exist in fucking California. No, it would only exist in like shit's shit splat places like fucking tennessee yeah you know I mean? <laughs> yeah i mean shit like that would not exist here i mean it's, it's just i don't know it's 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 out of hand man because like but think of uh like the times have changed because i'm sure there was a time where it was relevant out there you know what i mean like i, mean, I the, the most the thing that i can think of that was probably most relevant around my time was fucking rodney king you know what i mean okay Okay, so um, he's he's the guy that got his ass kicked by the cops, and they filmed it, right? And there was yeah. the, the riots happened because of that. Okay, or was the riots because of the fucking OJ thing? What was that like? Uh, it, was, it was Rodney King. It was, was Rodney. It? Okay. King. Yeah, no, OJ was the OJ was the notorious slowest the car chase ever done. Right, and the the Ford Bronco, right? Yep. <laughs> and they made fun of it on South Park. They made okay. fun of it everywhere because Yo. of the stupidest car chase ever filmed. I remember, I remember that day because my dad, you know, OJ was a fucking legend with the Oakland Raiders, which is our fucking team, like our fucking team growing up in California. Yeah, and and he's a fucking legend on that team. And I remember as a kid watching that chase, and my dad was just like, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's just like literally going on for like fifty miles an hour. For hours. Fuck, man. Well, until the gas tank ran out or what? It was until his tank ran out. Fuck, dude. Yo, I gotta ask you this. Is gas super cheap for you right now? 
Dude, I haven't left my house in a month in three days. I don't know. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, I got to say this. Like, usually gas is like, it's anywhere from like a dollar to like a dollar 25 for one liter, which what? is like, like one liter, not a gallon. What? But, but check this shit out. Right now, it's like 69 cents for one liter. So it's ridiculous. It's okay, ridiculous. So, okay. So before we went on this quarantine, a gallon per gas at my gas station would have been four dollars and probably twenty, maybe thirty cents. And how many okay. liters is that? I mean, I don't know. It's a fucking gallon of gas. Oh, fuck the goddamn metric system. I gotta look it up. <laughs> I mean, on average, for my truck, it would cost me. I will tell you, on on empty. It would cost me almost $95 American dollars to fill my truck up on empty. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. <laughs> like, oh, for the record, one gallon is 3.7 liters. Um, but, like... like <sighs> Oh, I, I, but this is what I was going to show you real quick. I mean, I feel bad for you guys. I know you guys get fucked with prices with everything else, like video games and movies and everything else. Oh, dude, everything. We get fucked for every price. But look at this before I forget. So this weed, it's called Ontario Rockstar, and they used the fucking they Rockstar. Used the Rockstar logo. Isn't that crazy? The same Rockstar logo I used in my first Manhunt review. Isn't that nuts? That thing in, the thing in the background? The yeah. thing where it looks like the Rockstar logo is like standing up super high? That yeah. I guarantee you, you watch that video and you're gonna be like, "What the fuck, man? It's well, the same thing." Well, Wellness Nation, uh, 420 Canada is fucking. They probably stole it from your video. <laughs> the sons of bitches. Man, um, I, don't know. I think if, if I were to live anywhere besides America, it'd probably be Canada. Oh, it's nice. It's nice, man. Like I, I've been to the states. Like I've been to. Uh, Detroit a bunch of fucking times. Detroit? Yeah. And you think that's nice? It's, well, I mean, it, okay, Detroit so... Detroit was like the murder capital of America. <laughs> well, I, when I was a kid, I remember 8 Mile came out, and I thought oh it was... Oh my god. Listen to this. I thought it was, like, <laughs> such a big deal. Check this shit out, dude. I Okay, so when I was a kid, we'd go to Detroit, and there's a... I think it's a town called Rosedale, and that's where, like, 8 Mile is and all that shit. And I'll never forget, we were driving, and I seen the sign that said 8 Mile, and I was a total Eminem fucking, like, fanboy back then. And I was like, oh my god, it's fucking 8 Mile, man, I need a photo with that, <laughs> like, the whole fucking nine yards, man. Uh, but that's as about as, the far, as far as the states as I've been. And it wasn't, like, like, it was nice, it wasn't, like, run down, I mean, it was pretty okay, so fucking, it felt like a back, it just felt like a lot of back. Okay, so Detroit's been known as like the murder capital of America since like the fucking 80s, man. <laughs> it's not a bad place. <laughs> I mean, have you, watched, have you watched the fucking Goonies? They even mention it in the fucking Goonies. <laughs> they do. They do. Isn't that where Mel... Uh, no, fucking Data's going there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like, murder capital of America. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I sounded Indian there. I can't do a good Asian accent. <laughs> oh, no, he says... uh any of you guys heard of Detroit? <laughs> <laughs> That's middle capital of America. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> oh, I love the Goonies, man. Me too. Dude, there's so many people who don't even... Even my age who haven't even fucking watched Goonies. It makes me sad. Yeah, their childhood sucked. Their childhood had no wonder. It had no wonder or magic if they haven't seen that movie. <laughs> I, I kind of agree because I was like one of those fucking kids growing up like where I went on little adventures and like kind of didn't like I would fucking like in elementary school during fucking like daycare and shit. Me and my friend who is Asian would leave all the time. And the reason why I bring up he's Asian because we would like ditch daycare and go to his house because his dad like lived in Japan or some shit like that. Would always send him back like Godzilla toys, Ultraman toys, and all the shit, all the shit that I we wouldn't get here. Yeah, my dad was like a huge, huge Ultraman and Godzilla fan, so I knew what the shit was. 
and we would play with it and shit. And we would like go on all these like little adventures outside of the fucking school. And I don't know. It was so, it was, it was so much fun back then. Shit, just shit. You would not like places, schools. Imagine a kid leaving a school now doing the shit that I just said. A school would get fucking sued up the yeah. ass for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, man. Because they're responsible if you guys are just <laughs> taking off to go frolic and fucking play Godzilla. <laughs> That's awesome, though, man. Like, I like it sucked kind of being like the only person that was in the know for this kind of shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you always kind of wanted to get people into it, and maybe sometimes you would, and it, a lot of times, like, you're just left alone with all these fucking movies and video games. Not so much video games, but especially movies, I find, like... Uh, yeah, like, you think you're fucking weird, because, like, I, 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 I 100% know this, because not only was it like that when I was in middle school, it was with, especially with comic books, fucking... I did not meet one kid who fucking read comic books in middle school. Me, I mean, besides my one friend, Justin, who we made, we made homemade comic books in school. And when we made these comic books, it was about basically about girls we didn't like in school, about killing, <laughs> like fucking robots and shit like that. Stuff yeah. you definitely not get away with now. But kids did not know the movies I was talking about. They did not know comic books I was talking about. I was a fucking like berated in school, in middle school for being a fucking like nerd and made fun of. And just for liking like shit that you would think people like would be accepting of like fucking Harry Potter. Like I read the first two Harry Potter books and people like thought thought I was a fucking idiot back then <laughs> reading those. You know what I mean? And <laughs> It's just stuff like nerd culture has become so consumed in being cool now. But back then, I can remember specifically how uncool it was. Anime was uncool. Uh, fantasy was uncool. Fucking comic books were uncool. Superheroes were very fucking uncool back then. Yeah. So. It, it was almost like it was almost like uh a one person adventure almost you know like you mentioned the word adventure earlier that's exactly what it, it felt like like for me in high school I didn't even bring up the fact that I was into any of that kind of shit I never did because everyone I hung out with was pretty much a fucking pot smoking dope dealer type so I, I it never came up you know what I mean sometimes I would ask people if they'd seen a certain movie or someone might mention a movie and then that's when it would be my time to shine you know what I mean so I could like you know, nerd out and be like, someone knows, knows about Clockwork Orange or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, or, or, or one of the Friday the 13th films, you know, you, you might see a, a guy like, uh, wear a fucking, you know, one thing that pisses me off, I have to say this, I'm a fucking big fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. And I hate that you can buy, uh, the shirts at like Walmart and all yeah. this shit, because now there's all these fucking assholes walking around with the goddamn big ass Wu-Tang on their chest. And they don't know any fucking albums, any songs, and that fucking irks me. Doesn't that irk you with 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 all this kind of shit? I mean, I feel like it's it's. It, I feel like robbed when I see that it, shit. It irks me, especially. It, it really irks me when it comes to bands and music. Yeah. If I know some shit came from fucking like Walmart or maybe Hot Topic because it was cool at that time, yeah, it it really bugged me at the moment. Uh, back then. In, in, at least in my time, the only way you can make sure that you were not a part of the poser crowd is because you were actually at the show and bought a fucking tour shirt. You were fucking there. Okay. Um, Wal Walmart and fucking like Spencer's and fucking uh, Hot Topic, you know, they had all the generic bullshit shirts for fucking like Lamb God and Disturbed and all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was, it was, you knew who the posers were. They were doing it for fashion they weren't doing it because they liked they liked what they were wearing or liked the music but do you know what's popular right now dude that you see all the time is is kids wearing thrasher magazine shirts you know what's weird look at my look at my fucking hat well there you go well you skateboard and you fucking 
have probably you probably own copies of Thrasher magazine. You're not wearing it for a fucking I owned fashion not statement. Copy of Thrasher magazine, but I owned almost every issue from like nineteen ninety nine to fucking like two thousand seven of a uh, Trans World magazine, which was another skateboard magazine. Yeah, dude, I'm a I've been hardcore in skating forever, and I I it drives me nuts when I see these kids that I know have never touched a skateboard. Wearing a fucking Thrasher magazine T-shirt, dude. Let alone have they held a magazine. <laughs> you know oh my saying? god, you're right. Magazines aren't even fucking sold anymore. Yeah, like fuck, oh. man. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Oh my god. Fuck, man. <clears throat> man, uh. What's what? What's one of your favorite like go to films like of of all time? Mm. Of all time, like I don't like I know it's asinine to be like what's your favorite movie, but like what's one of your go tos or a couple of your go tos? It would depend on my mood. If I was hungover as fuck, it's always the thing from another world, not the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. It's the thing from another world. Or OG. Or 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 Abbott and Costello. I fucking love Abbott and Costello, man. Okay, thank you. I know so many people who hate them, and I don't understand why. Like, once again, your dad probably got you into that shit. My dad, My dad got a huge Three Stooges fan. Exact same, man. So all that kind of stuff, like Laurel and Hardy and <clears throat> like uh jack benny i'm not sure who jack benny is i've never heard oh of that dude when I, you want to hear something fucking really fucking uh politically incorrect incorrect yeah he, one of the most popular comedians of the 1940s and 1950s and he had a black slave fucking driver <laughs> what <laughs> that's insane jesus christ that's yeah but he's, he was hilarious at the time i give him credit Fuck. That's outrageous. Do you ever watch any of the old Johnny Carson reruns? I've seen it. I have seen it, and it's like kind of uh, touching a little bit of racism. It's fucking. But the thing, like the thing is, it is touching like the racism. But it's it's a cool time stamp, you know, to watch that shit because it shows you what was happening. Like that's the fucking jimmy fallon and all those kind of guys of back then i feel like he did it way better because i feel like those shows nowadays they're a dime a dozen i couldn't tell you who's doing it other than jimmy fallon and jimmy kimmel i could literally be jimmy fallon or jimmy kimmel if i was paid enough money I would have to, all i would have to do is put on a suit and fucking read exactly what it was written for me yeah and I fucking mean, make, it, try it's... to <laughs> just, just laugh at everything like fucking Fallon, man. Just be like, <laughs> dude. You, you, okay, so you know what really, really irks me is I, I I've been to Universal Studios, California, the last few years, and one of their biggest selling points during the tour, when you're on the tram tour, where they bring you through the back lot, where fucking Back to the Future was filmed, and fucking the original. King Kong was filmed and all that shit. Jimmy Fallon is the fucking main thing that they have you watch during the fucking tour on the fucking little TV in the fucking tour bus. And it, it, it makes me want to commit suicide. Yeah. I know it sounds extreme, but like I, I, I grew up in fucking Universal Studios in the fucking early 90s going on this fucking tour ride. And the place spoke for it fucking self. To where I'm watching Jimmy Fallon basically do a fucking advertisement the entire fucking tour ride what for fucking shame. bullshit like Fast and the Furious. It makes me just <laughs> have a fucking gun in my mouth. <laughs> That's insanity, man. Like they they could have do they have any kind of universal monster thing there? <laughs> or is that a joke? So if it, if you wanna if you if you wanna feel really sad, it's Oh man. It's what is it like a fucking little side note? <laughs> it's not only a side note. It's it's fucking pathetic. It's like 
when you're when you're driving through the place where fucking Back to the Future was filmed. There's yeah. basically a guy dressed up in a really shitty Frankenstein costume acting like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's brutal, man. It's, what a it's shame. It's what a shame. Bad. They own so much good shit, and that could be so cool. Fuck. I know, and when they talk about Jaws, they don't talk about actual Jaws. They talk about Jaws the Revenge for some reason. In, what? In, like, an expansive... Like history lesson. I don't know why. Jaws the... Revenge fucking sucks. Mm-hmm. Sucks dick, man. I hate that movie. I hate it. I own it twice for fuck's sake, but I hate it. <laughs> man. Uh yeah, that's sad. That's sad. Cause I remember when I was a kid and you'd get like the like earlier you were talking about the the tapes, how they have stuff that you never see. Mm-hmm. Like uh, you know, the lead in commercials and shit. I remember, like, like this. This is the uh, the version of the Universal Horror tapes that I was collecting. It's like the AVGN ones. Like I seen these on AVGN and shit, right? I remember uh, Costco. Yeah, well, they have they have like the coolest intros. And, like they talk about like uh, actually, I don't think those ones talk about the studio, but I remember they had like photos and everything cool looked cool. You know what I'm talking about? Like <laughs> they had like really cool intro commercials where it would like go over all of the fucking like Universal Studios horror like yeah. shit. Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. remember that. It was awesome. And you get the you get the idea that Universal Studios would you'd see the psycho house and you'd see the the fucking Jaws thing would come out of the water and all that cool stuff. And now it's just gone so they can talk about the fucking nineteenth Fast and the Furious. Like and Matt, check this out. What if they only made one Fast and the Furious and that was it? That movie would... Fu- like, I, I love that movie, but I think I would love it about a million times more if it was the only one. I think sequels are the death of fucking like, good, good movies. And sometimes. sometimes, Not always. Not always. But especially now. Like, we don't get... When's a fucking good sequel come out lately? Can you think of any? Fuck no, because they're not there, man. No, I can't. Bullshit. It's bullshit. No, I can't. Like, the last time good sequels were coming out were, like, the, the early 2000s with, like, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's uh, beginning. It was the sequel to the remake. And uh, what the hell else? The, the Hills Have Eyes 2 was pretty brutal. Not as good as the first Hills Have Eyes remake, but it was still pretty brutal. There's, like, oh, a my- guy that... I loved I loved your video talking about the Hills Have Eyes remake Thank because you. I re, I remember so much of going to that theater with that fucking chick on a date and That's she was just so like, fucking funny and she was so fucking horrified. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's it's the worst fucking movie to take a chick to. That's like it, that, you might have been able to size her up to know if she's a horror fan or not. Like. I didn't know they were gonna push it to that fucking extreme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I have, I could. Okay, here's a little insight with me. I've had, I've had the worst luck of run of movies when it comes to dating women and taking them to movies. It's either been Hills Have Eyes, it's been fucking Bo Rats, which is another fucking oh extreme my God. movie to take a chick to. <laughs> it's just been, it's been horror movie or some sort of fucked up movie where it's like. Why? Why? Why yeah. did I do it? It's like there's either there's okay. So with Hills of Eyes, it's chock full of fucking like rape and murder. Borat is is full of like women are nothing kind of talk. Like, <laughs> like talk. It's crazy, guy. It's crazy. Fuck. You know, like, stupid. Like man, Trust it's crazy. Me, I, I was at home. I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get a call ever again. <laughs> It's like, what was your favorite part? The part where she gets raped or the part where <laughs> the fucking baby gets stolen? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's like, remember when he, remember when that guy was eating the dog? That was real crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So, the, yeah, I was, a, I was, a, I'm a very bad fucking, like, judgment in fucking movies, okay? It's like. Yeah. Stick to the fucking, uh, you gotta stick to, like, the happy shit. <laughs> Like I, the can't, drama. I can't do romantic comedy. It's like it's oh, like me either. It's it's like worse than a and a rape and then a fucking horror movie for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's it's awesome. Like, 
have you seen the original like house on the last house on the left it's like oh, it's yeah. like it's like more horrific for me than that fucking rape scene in that movie <laughs> <laughs> that movie's pretty brutal man it's it, good it, it's really brutal it's good those two cops kind of fuck up the flow of the film though like those bumbling cops but you look past that it's a fucked up 70s film and those guys like the people that they use, like the not the main bad guy, but like you know the sidekick with like the spiked up hair. Yeah, he just he screams like he's gonna fucking rape somebody. Like just the look of him, man. Some people just yeah. have that look to them. I agree. It's it's really fucked up to say, but some people just look like they're pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like how how the fuck? Like, have you ever seen the movie The Warriors? Oh, fuck yeah, I've seen. Okay, that. so do you know the guy that runs the orphans? <laughs> like the guy like the guy like with the, the green shirt guys and they end up throwing the molotov cocktail at them oh, yeah 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 that fucking guy <laughs> the most rapey guy i've ever seen in my whole life man <laughs> jesus christ okay where the fuck did they find him so so you know in the beginning of my um, of my video intros yeah like when I, when i'm doing movie reviews and the guy's like fuck this whole scene everybody dies yeah. kind of thing okay so that comes from a b horror movie like an independent horror movie that i saw in like 2005 called murder party okay and 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 that character that is saying that line in that movie is dressed up like one of the fucking baseball guys from fucking uh uh the warriors warriors and yes, and he, that he's carrying an axe and his whole fucking thing was just like he just he just wants to murder people and i love that whole scene and i love that movie dude i could do a whole fucking video on on not only the history of that movie of my fandom of that movie but having the actors reach out to me because I was such a fucking nerd when that movie came out that I literally emailed them. Like, I hunted down their fucking emails to look for their fucking independent film <laughs> that came out with to fund that fucking movie. <laughs> That's dope. <laughs> That's dope. You should totally do that, man. You should totally fucking do that. I, that was, I even what have, is that movie called again? Murder Party? Murder Party. But I even have... I even have the sticky note. That one of the main actors left me in the mail for the fucking, oh, like, for the fucking their their independent also movie to film to to fund that movie. It's just, I'm I'm a huge fucking nerd. It's just people don't understand. They think I'm like, oh yeah, I like video games. I like horror video games. No, I'm a fucking gigantic nerd. And when I say <laughs> I'm a gigantic fucking nerd when it comes to movies video games and everything else i i am probably like to an extreme to where people think i'm fucked up <laughs> <laughs> well that's how i feel like when i first met my girlfriend and i had all my movies in my bedroom which every wall was movie and i said listen uh you're gonna be like pretty fucking shocked and i showed her and she was like she thought it was cool though she thought it was fucking cool. So I was like, Bo like this is sick. But I I remember like back in the day, like hanging out with people and like if like a group of people were over, if there was like broads or anything like that, they like they weren't into anything like that. And I was like, you guys are fucking lame, man. Like, OK, you guys think I'm a fucking nerd. I think you guys are boring as shit. Like, I want to like talk about like remember back in the day, like uh, like I know you're going to this is going to hit you the same way it hits me. Pokemon, the fucking video games. How amazing are those? If people don't like th those first three goddamn games, if you don't like those, I don't even want to talk to you. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. I, that's a, that's my life motto. If you don't fucking like, all I want to know is what color Game Boy did you play your fucking what what game on? You know, I had Pokemon Yellow with a purple Game Boy color, <clears throat> and it was like one of the best best experiences of my fucking life was playing that game. Like, I I never was the biggest fan of the cartoon. I've seen a few episodes, but that game blew my balls off because I got a cousin that's a couple like a year or two older than me, so he could actually kind of comprehend it and he kind of like showed me what was what. And it took me like a year to beat the first Pokemon game, but 
I'm telling you, man, what a fucking experience. And it's such a simple looking game, like in design. But when you get into it and you get into like grinding your fucking your characters up and all that shit, Final like that's, that's for kids. It's crazy. It's, it's fucking Final crazy. Final Fantasy for kids. It's like an introduction to fucking RPGs at its basic core, but it's yeah. I mean, I feel the same way. I mean, I fucking was there for yeah. fucking Pokemon Red and Blue. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah. My I was given fucking Pokemon Red. My stupid little brother was given fucking Pokemon Blue, and. That po- that was it. You never and looked I back. Can't express how many nights, how many nights were fucking lost on on playing Pokemon Red to a point where it's like you're playing it under the covers. I mean, I'm still I'm still at this point where they're still shitty Game Boy. It's not it's not even fucking Game Boy Color yet when fucking game, when Pokemon came out, and really? and and. I'm playing it, and it, yeah, it's like you said, it blew my fucking balls off. It was, it was a game that was not fucking Metroid 2. It was not fucking Mario and Mario 2 Six Golden Coins. It was a fucking game where I could sink my teeth into and play beyond, you know, a fucking day. I would play it for hours and hours and hours to a point where it was... It was Literally banned in schools because kids would play it so fucking yeah. much. Same here. Same here. I mean... The cards were banned, too, because kids were getting their fucking cards. They would trade their cards, and the parents would come, and they'd fucking snap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, <laughs> you know, I was one of those kids. I was one of those older kids. Shamefully, but kind of uh, unshamefully. You were a prick. You were a prick, I bet, weren't you? Okay, so... I was there when Pokemon came out, okay? I was I was a fourth or fifth grader when Pokemon was released for the right. first time ever. I was hardcore about Pokemon. I knew these fucking first graders who just got this card pack given by their mom didn't know what the fuck. So, yeah. like, oh, yeah, maybe your fucking holographic, you know, Kangaskhan, you know, maybe you want to trade it for this, you know, non-holographic fucking... Yeah. Cool Pokemon. Oh, here's Pikachu. Pikachu's the main guy. The main guy. I wasn't that shitty. I would give him something <laughs> at least a little good. You know what Just, I mean? Yeah, a fucking star trainer or something. <laughs> <laughs> this trainer's the like it doesn't the Pokemon's cool, but this thing, it, if you play the game, it, it'll aid you in the game. Poor little bastard's <laughs> like, okay. Goes home. Well, they shouldn't be such chodes and try to jump in at the last minute. <laughs> yeah, little bastards. I was one of those little bastards, but I never got sc- this. This is my claim to fame with Pokemon. When I was a kid, uh, me and this older fucking kid went to the store and I bought a pack of Pokemon cards and I pulled a Blastoise. And he he said that we were gonna share it. He said this to me, right? And I said, I don't fucking know about that, right? And I told my mom, and I was like, this guy's saying I have to share the card, and she fucking snapped on this kid, man. So you're oh. fucking taking his card. Because it was, like, my, my older cousin, he was like, no, that's Blastoise. But he was even younger than this older kid, so he tried to strong-arm me for my Blastoise. And my other claim to fame with Pokemon cards is the same cousin once spilled fucking sardines on a Hitmonchan or Hitmonlee, one of those one of those two cards, and it smelt like that forever. And I fucking was so mad at him. I was like, you son of a bitch. You spilt fucking... Because he used to eat sardines out of the tin like a fucking redneck from... I don't even know where. I was like, like how can you eat that? Like, like you're like an animal. Tennessee. Like, yeah, like you're are you from Tennessee eating them out of a fucking tin? The fucking Tabasco sauce, man? That's crazy. Like, fuck, man. Next thing you know, you're gonna hear the deliverance music fucking playing. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh my God. My oh, God. Yeah, that could be a whole nother fucking episode right there is Pokemon. Shit. Pokemon. Yes. I didn't do that fucking deep fucking research. Like, that Manhunt 2 video you did, god damn. Like, uh, because you know how there's, like, those super polished channels out there that, like, that's, like, the kind of shit they post, like, on the fuck. Like, I was, like, so fucking... It was, like, a history lesson. It felt like a history lesson to me, man. I mean, I try... When it comes to videos, it's, like, 
I already know that my videos and my channel is like really niche and kind of like weird because my channel is basically made for people that are like me. It's not made for exactly, but that's the thing. That's what makes it so cool, man. And like everyone has their own topic, but that video felt like an unbiased, like, j like expose on the game. It didn't feel like, like us just kind of like either like bullshitting about the game. Like, like you got to admit, like this has probably happened to you before. Like you turn on the camera and you start talking about something and then you realize it's just been you saying like how awesome it is for like 10 minutes. You're like, that's why I came up with the fucking aftermath series altogether because my game reviews don't all, always reflect how I honestly feel and I wish I wish I would have thought to make like an aftermath series after every game review like like I do now because there was just so much I could fucking nerd about and fucking complain about and fucking also praise about games that I don't do in a review because it just doesn't fit you know what I mean yeah yeah how do you how do you usually pick shit out to make videos on is it something you've been playing recently, or how the fuck does that usually go for you? First, I go for what I feel like I know the best. Something I know the best because I grew up playing it. Right. Um, so, me getting on YouTube started. I did Super Nintendo games. I did N64 games at the beginning. And... <clears throat> Um, there's there's videos that have never been re-uploaded because of my original YouTube channel's deletion back in like fucking 2014 or 15 or whatever the fuck. And that that would have been about the time I think that we met. I think we met in some fucking Google Hangout. I think we were in a Google Hangout together with some guy that was dressed up like a clown. Do you remember that? Clown me. Is that who's is that? I don't. I haven't fucking thought of that in a goddamn long time but is okay, that what his so, name was so clown so clown <laughs> is one of my really close friends now he's he's like a personal friend of mine nice um, what's, what's the deal like what was like i don't even really remember like what his what his channel was about like what was his thing i mean he's still making youtube videos is he i'll have to fucking subscribe to him i mean he gets he gets banned all the time because his shit's been so controversial in the what, past but what was he doing wasn't he like doing like uh like he was doing, doing like, fireworks shows oh. in his fucking house yeah that's what it was fireworks shows fuck sakes i remember that <laughs> that's fucking hilarious though man oh look you watch Mita mudahara how the fuck do you uh what the fuck is it called Clown stupid you see on yeah, I've been fucking on, like, a, a downward spiral of, like, watching all of, like, the YouTube drama so kind of shit. About Unique, oh, 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 shitty on or whatever, but I've been watching him. No, that's not him. I've been watching uh, all of his shit uh, about uh, fucking Davi Vanity from Blood on the Dance Floor because that guy, I mean, that guy was a fucking relevant topic back when I was in high school about him raping fucking like 10 year olds and shit like that that's like the new thing fuck i keep <clears throat> i keep screwing up because the screen share button i keep thinking it's the enlarge button is there if i see see fucking skype is so weird to me now i'm not used to it anymore um is there a way i can fucking like just find his channel and share it to you right now on youtube from youtube see i almost did it again Fuck. Did you ever watch the lives that me and him did? <laughs> I don't even know, man. I couldn't tell you. I was in one of them, though, because that's how I definitely met you. Because me and my friend Sean, we used to just find Google Hangouts and just go in and, and talk to people. And you guys were two of them. And we were like, oh, shit. And then I remember, because I remember you were, like, talking about video game and shit and movie stuff. And I was like, oh, shit. So that's how I... Came to follow you. You were like a different channel back then. You were game, game by night reviews. Yeah. My original channel. Yeah. How how do I fucking do this? There we go. Chat is this the chat button conversation? There we go. There you go, buddy. 
right. Let's There's the there. channel. All right. Does that look familiar? That dude looks familiar. Fuck, I haven't seen him in so long. All right, let's see. I should screen share this so we can move this together. Yeah, I haven't watched this dude in so damn long. I do remember him doing the the fireworks stuff, though. Like a shitload of them. Yeah, so we, me and him, dude, we've been, I guess, you, YouTube friends, you would call it, for like... Yeah. The better half of, like, my time on YouTube. Fuck, sakes. Probably since, like, 2014 or whatever. Before before my original fucking channel... Yeah, you must have been there before my original channel was even gone, if you knew about Game by Night Reviews. Yeah, I'm going to sub to uh, to Clown Meat so I can check his shit out later on. Oh, I have to... What the fuck is this? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a blast from the past, dude. What the fuck is this? Am I screen sharing right now? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at myself. Looking okay, at myself. Okay. Flexing How's... your camera. I keep fucking myself That's... over here, dude. Uh... Oh, oh, I see it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. That That is a blast from the past. Clown meat. Shout out to clown meat. <clears throat> Isn't that fucking uh, illegal? Like, uh, fireworks down there in the States for you guys? Aren't they? Or firecrackers? Uh, uh, it depends on what state you're living in. And in <clears throat> California, in California, you could be... Tell me how fucked up this might, this might sound to you. <clears throat> Let's hear you it. might as well go and rape someone, and you'll get a worse charge with fireworks than you would by raping someone in California. What? You might as well be a fucking federal fe- felon at that point. That's that's insane. Like, because... You'll never get you'll never get out of prison if you get caught with illegal fireworks in California. Like, have you ever heard of black cats? Like just like the little. Yeah. Okay. Like, you, is that the kind of firecracker you can get in shit for? Um. Kinda. I mean, the shit you can the shit in California you get in trouble for now is. Fuck! I can go down to the gas station on the goddamn reserve. And get a box of them. <laughs> no problem. Light them all up. In California, you can get in trouble for basically anything anymore. It seems like. That's I mean, true. you can't even own a you can't even own a gun that has a clip bigger than ten rounds in California until you're considered a federal fucking criminal. <clears throat> That's fucked. So, I mean, if you had a fucking drum mag, which was legal. At one point in California, if you had a drum mag of a thirty-round fucking rifle, you're gonna go to federal prison for the rest of your life. <laughs> See, that's the thing that blows blows my mind. Like guns, like the gun culture is something that, like, I just I'm so blind to because they just don't. You know, other than, like, maybe someone, like, in high school or whatever questionably owning a fucking handgun, like, some unsavory type or something like that, uh, the only people that I know that own guns are, like, super hick types. Like, the ultimate hick types, and, like, that's it. That blows my mind. No one has guns, man. That blows my fucking mind. Like, I own, I own guns just because, like... Yeah. Who the fuck's gonna break into your house? You gotta blow it's, them. It's impossible to like fucking buy them here. First of all, like there's not like you never see like in Detroit. Like it's like gun shop, gun shop, gun shop, liquor shop, liquor shop, gun shop, gun shop, gun shop. But here it's like I remember when I was in high school, there was a gun shop, and me and my buddy went there because it was across the street from Taco Bell. We're like, let's go to the gun shop. And we went in there, and like they got all these guns, and then they were closed down. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's more of like a. Uh, Extraordinary. Yeah, that's an American thing. People down in America with their guns. America. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, we are a gun cult, gun toting culture. <clears throat> All right. So, it's been a, it's been a blast. It's been a, a dip and a hell of a trip. And uh, it was fun to hear the exploits of you, uh, your video game history, growing up watching stuff with your dad. The story of you taking a chick to the Hills of Eyes remake, 
and uh yeah you know, all that stuff it's 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 been fun man i definitely would love to do this again so yeah do you got anything else Thanks, to say brother. i i appreciate all your content you make we are we are a dying breed in the youtube community i think we are a diamond in the rough when it comes to youtube content i think most people nowadays are looking for bullshit youtube drama or you know bullshit youtube celebrities yeah uh, i think we are you know we are the last dying breed of fucking youtube independent content creators that are not based on fucking youtube drama and yeah. i think that not only that we share the same uh likes and dislikes for gaming and movies but i mean i think we can hold an actual fucking conversation that uh treats you know that, that makes us happy but treats our viewers also yeah and and listeners with with respect so i think yeah. if you guys like our content i mean i i highly suggest you subscribe to both of our contos our channels <laughs> contos contos content yeah. con, con, uh, channels content uh, i'm fucking drunk a little bit okay i've been having some whiskey tonight but i would say once in a video fucking subscribe to this channel this guy knows what the fuck he's talking about. And me, I, I'm just some chode that makes fucking videos on the internet. So, I mean, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right. So, that, and I, I, I got to say, man, once again, check check this guy's channel out if you have not. Uh, you know, he it's the kind of shit that, I, that I, I mess with, you know. And, like, the thing I like about you is you're, you're still, like, you have... Uh, a, a decent following like do you remember back in the day like you have over a thousand subscribers can you remember a time where you would have had your fucking head blown off if you knew you had a thousand subscribers so i think like that is a, a like in the grand scheme of things it's not like a fucking 10 million like you, like you know what i'm saying but what you have is what you have and you earned all that shit by talking about what you love and it's fun to talk about what you love you know it's it's you get a good kick out of it and when you when you're able to share the passion it's 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 a great feeling man so it was definitely a good time talking to you i'm stoned as fuck this room is uh, it is a great feeling but i will tell you this it's always a fleeting feeling after you have your channel deleted by youtube because yeah. youtube is fucked so i'm just gonna say that right now so if i end up disappearing one day just because youtube decides to make me disappear then you know what guess what youtube's never gonna get rid of me i'm always gonna be here so yeah, I love your I love the channel, man. I love I love the fact that you you are also a legitimate, in my opinion, a legitimate person who creates content on YouTube. You're not a person that's like a fucking news regurgitator. You're not a fucking person that's just like complaining about shit that you read on a fucking card Kotaku article. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. The thing about this, <coughs> Jesus Christ. This Ontario rock star, give me Corona. <laughs> um, I shouldn't have joked about that, but um, no, fuck the, it. everything's funny or nothing is. Exactly, Patrice O'Neill. Um, the the thing is, like, I don't like making videos about shit that I fucking totally despise, unless I know I can make it entertaining. Do you know what I mean? Because like, if if there's a movie that I totally hate, like. I don't know. I can't even really think of any because I don't own any movies that I dislike. Like I've purged the collection so many times. It's all shit that I would grab at any time. But uh, fuck, man, like I'm so high. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. I wish I could say the same thing about Curtains, the last movie I ever fucking reviewed. That movie fucking sucks. It sucks. Oh, it's dude, is that that's that's the one with that cover, right? Yeah. Like, oh, man. The fucking meat curtains. Lady yes. curtain face with the fucking doll in the middle. That's so fucking crazy. But that that fucking movie sucks. I wish I wish I could purge it, but it's a must for a VHS horror collection. And fuck all those people that say I look like H three H three. Look at this H three H three. Don't look like this, okay? You don't look like this. I like my thing is with all with all that kind of like YouTube like the 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 bigger channels like that that like that make a living off of talking about other youtube channels and stuff it's it's funny to me like how like 
like how serious motherfuckers take it. Like that's like the reason that I watch some some of uh some of like the drama e type shit on YouTube is because to me it blows my mind, especially when it's like older people. Like if it's like a dude in his forties and he's like talking about like what fucking iDubs is doing or something, like, it's we, like like Queefstar. Yeah, it's like what like like what's the point? I mean, okay, you're getting paid for it, but that's like a shitty job to have. There's no way you're happy. You know, I want it like it's important. Like I'll quote Hunter S. Thompson in my line of work. It's important to be happy. You know, I don't want to fucking sit around and talk about like what Starbucks drink some fucking asshole is getting. I want to talk about the I'm shit that I like. This dude, this dude was my separated brother at birth. Just the fact that he brought up Hunter S. Thompson, I already know that we were meant to be fucking like blood brothers right here. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I man, I fucking love me some Hunter S. Thompson. Like I said, the Hell's Angel, like he wrote a Hell's Angels book. That like you, you obviously know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, which he got beat the fuck up for. Did you see that thing on? Uh, like they were on a talk show, and then this fucking dude, like that's crazy, it's so crazy. He's like, oh man, I love that guy, and I love me some Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, th- there's a graphic novel. I don't know if you if you've checked that out. It's awesome. Some guy like like in the last ten years, a guy did an adaptation and it's great. I haven't seen that, but I will check it out. And then when I saw Rum Diaries, it like fucking blew my mind too. <laughs> I fuck with that movie too. Rum Diaries is good. Yeah, it was definitely a different flavor. But that was the thing. Like no one expected that to be the next Fear and Loathing. You know well, what I mean? before he was fucked in Fear and Loathing, like as he was in drugs. But also, who directed? Like, because I know Terry Gilliam, I think, directed Fear and Loathing, and he's directed some weird ass shit. Like, I think he did fucking Baron Munchausen and like <laughs> some weirdo fucking movies, man. Oh my god. Uh, Here's one the other. Thing. Here's the thing to everyone okay. that's listening to this and watching this we're fucking nerds, okay? We're fucking weirdos. We were fucking despised as kids for what we like. And yeah. because now it's cool to like nerdy shit, it's still not cool to like as nerdy shit as we still do. Or take it as fucking serious as or as personal. It's because I've never I've never uh, called it uh, being a nerd. I've always called it being fucking completely obsessed to the point of like puke inducing. Because <laughs> like the fact that I have all these VHS tapes, uh, like my friends think I'm insane. They think I'm insane. And people will, people will come here sometimes and be like, hey, can I borrow a movie? And I say, fuck no. <laughs> you have a better chance of, uh, you know, banging fucking Raquel Welch in her prime than you do getting a movie out of, out of this fucking house, man. As far as these movies go, they go to my garage and then they come right back in. Yeah. At least you have friends. I don't even have friends that would be able to see this kind of shit. People... Well, not anymore. I'm talking about like like in the start when I was like like because p- people haven't came here. Like we stopped allowing smoking in the house, which I'm clearly doing right now, and everyone stopped coming here because everyone I knew was a smoker at the time. So and because we used to get to get together, play Risk, play fucking Monopoly. Because like I really love Monopoly. So excited that we're gonna keep doing podcast. We should keep doing podcasts like this because not only can we talk about smoking, we can talk about fucking movies. We can talk about all the shit. Because I, like I said, I feel like me and you are fucking like separated at birth. We we were separated by fucking country, but yeah, we're brethren. Exactly. Do I have a Canadian accent? I gotta ask that. You do. How does it sound? Can you imitate it in any way? Uh, so I can get a taste. Because <laughs> you sound normal to me. You, you don't. You, sound, say, you don't you, have an you, accent at all. You say things like a boot. <laughs> I say a boot. I've said a boot. Not not like as fucking stupid as I just said it, but you have that fucking thing where you make the weird sound when you're saying oh. Oh, oh, about about a boot. How do you say a boot. A boot. I like I like this movie about a boot. Or... I like this I like this movie about exploitation. <laughs> yeah, like you have this weird fucking <laughs> See, I'm glad you say this because I've talked to British people and British people think I sound like fucking a ninja turtle. <laughs> You sound like you just sound exactly like someone that would be in a movie sounds. That's how you, you're you don't have an accent. You just sound like like the way you sound is normal to me, but the okay, way that a person good. from because Tennessee sounds, people, they sound like they're fucking backdoor 
back alley. You bum sound like you stuff. say a boot. I like this movie a boot. Some shit. <laughs> I don't know. I can't fucking say it right. But some people think that I sound like fucking Michelangelo from Ninja Turtles when I talk. Like, hey, yo, dude, this is radical. <laughs> Tubular. What does he yeah, say? Longer. <clears throat> what I does he say? Uh, forgiveness is divine, but never pay for late pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Wise man, I can't even fucking do it. Do you uh, remember? But I can say I can. I can do a, a macho man. Ooh yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, I have to ask you this: were were you living in were you living in California when when Schwarzenegger was the governor? Oh yeah, he fucked up our state real good. So like, how does that feel having the fucking Terminator being in power? Like, like okay, did, what did it he was do? Shit. Like, what did he do? Did he do anything for you guys? He eradicated death penalty and then rebuked on it at the last minute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That, and then he was, meet. he was married to Rory R- Shriver and then <laughs> fucking cheated on her the whole time with the fucking <laughs> badass maid. So I don't know. That's fucked. Like, I don't know, man. I always wondered because we always used to make fun of that. We used to say, uh, I'm the governor and all that kind of shit. Yes, I am the governor. This is Lance and this is France and we hit to pump you up and fuck maids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Jingle All the Way with Sinbad. <laughs> Which I love. I love that movie. Me too. I have fucking Turbo Man the doll. What? You got a Turbo Man? Yeah, I do. Jesus Christ. You know what I love about that movie? When he goes to that sleazy fucking bootlegger and there's like a midget with him and they buy the fucking, they get like the Spanish version that's like falling apart and shit. (laughs) (laughs) It's the flea market fucking version. Yeah. I remember it was a big deal that the the kid from Star Wars was in it or vice versa. Yeah, you're right. So, See, that fucking Canadian accent, it just sounded like you said it, the dogs are brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? What's, what's another Canadian sounding word? I don't know. I say, you can't think of any. Because, do I say A? I know I say that, but I don't say it in like a fucking... It sounded I'm gonna nasty. Go, I'm gonna, this, this is me trying to put on a thick Canadian accent. Oh, fuck, bud. I'm going to go down and get me a poutine down at the bar or something like that. That's how... They what talk like that. Even mean like a poot. You know, you don't know what a poutine is. <laughs> a poutine? <laughs> no, a poutine. No, what's that? A fucking poutine, man. It's like uh, French fries with uh, cheese I, on it I, and gravy. I thought you were talking about getting like pussy or something. No, oh, no. Well, poutine or cunt. We just call it cunt, man. Cunt or pussy. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That that's not what I heard. And when you said that, <laughs> no. Oh my god! <clears throat> oh my god! Poutine. Yo, poutine, man. Stop poutine. <laughs> Look up a poutine. Yo, poutine. Yo, if you ate a poutine, it would change your life, man. I've eaten many of those. You've had them. No. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a fries with gravy and cheese? No. I'm not talking about pussy. I'm talking about fries and gravy and cheese. No, I don't know what you're talking about, man. That's what a poutine is. It's fries and gravy and cheese. <laughs> it's like the Canadian dish, they say. Ah, uh, okay. It's random as fuck. <laughs> no, I've never eaten fries with gravy. You've never had that? Is that fucking like a hash brown? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's like a fucking. If you take fries, like French fries, like regular fucking French fries. From like McDonald's? Yeah, or make them at your house or whatever. You know, like deep fry it. And then you put fucking cheese on them. And then you put gravy on top of that. And then you eat it. And you fucking. You could put some fresh green onions on there and some shit. And you got a fucking poutine, man. Yeah, that doesn't exist here. (laughs) That's crazy, man. Fuck. The word poutine doesn't exist here. No, not poutine. Poutine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, man. Yo, if, like, how this quarantine, they're saying here that it's going to be, like, another, like, 28 days or some shit. 
but it's probably going to be longer than that. But I mean, if you're down, like we can do this every fucking week, every couple of days or something. Yeah, I'm. You I'm, got nothing I'm, else to do. I'm, I'm totally down for that, dude. I'm quarantined and 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 furloughed from my job until like the end of June, and that's just their prediction. Jesus Christ, that's brutal. Yeah. All right, man. Do you want to shut her down and we'll fucking uh, we'll reconvene? We'll we'll talk on like Instagram or something. We'll set up another yeah, time. Exactly. We'll talk about proteins. Yeah, we'll talk. I'm gonna fucking send you a recipe for that. <laughs> yeah, you should. I mean, I kind of know what poontine is. <laughs> it's not as good as poon tang, but it's pretty fucking Whatever. good. It sounds the same. <laughs> All right. So thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, have a lovely evening. Check out the channel to uh, Force Channel, which will be in the fucking description. And uh, yeah, have a good night. Adios and take care. Have a good night. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.